Judy Justice. She wasn't trespassing in your house, madam. She wasn't burglarizing your house. She was bitten by your pit bull. That's right, what the case is about. Told, she was told not to go if into I my believe, house. If I believe you. Now I'm going to look at your video. Oh, my God. <laughs> she even said it was her fault. It wasn't her fault. It was your fault. You had the dangerous how is animal. It, how is it my now, fault? I second. told don't her ask, not to go in my house. Me, don't ask me any questions, madam. And now, the conclusion. Myla Bazin is suing her former employer, Sarah Adams, for lost wages and pain and suffering after being bit by Sarah's pit bull. Okay, my issue actually is, in addition to everything else, why would a seemingly smart woman have a dog that she would have to warn people about to come to her front door? What? I say to myself, why? I don't understand that. And when I was preparing for this case today, looking at the complaint and looking at the answer, I, I could do a little multitasking. I was reading the newspaper. This is today. A seven-year-old Louisiana girl was mauled to death by a neighbor's pit bull after it ran into her family yard. The name of the person is here. Was A child was laying outside her East Baton Rouge Parish home Friday when the dog barreled onto the property and viciously attacked her. Family member tried to stop the dog by hitting it with a walking cane, but the animal couldn't be deterred. First grader suffered multiple bites to her face and severe skull damage. She died. The dog was euthanized. The dog's owner told the officers he wasn't home during the attack and regularly lets the dog roam the neighborhood. He was charged Saturday with homicide. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I would go right from charge to execution. I also have proof that she, another lady down the street just, was bitten by... Just, I'm going to get to you. I'm not finished. Okay. I'm not finished. I don't understand. I have others. I have others, because it looks like... You look like... Dog-sitting mom killed by pit bulls. North Carolina woman was mauled to death by two pit bulls she was dog-sitting for after the mother warned her to stop watching the animals, according to reports. That's all. Husband came home, found her in the backyard being eaten by two pit bulls that she was watching for her son. I don't understand. I have more, but I won't bore you with more. So I don't understand why intelligent people have a dog that they know is capable of killing somebody, of just turning and killing somebody. I don't understand it. I think, you know, insurance companies can, can legally discriminate against people who have pit bulls by saying, we're not going to insure you. And there's a reason for that. But, Your Honor, I told her before she left not to go in my house. Uh, my dog was uh, not outside. Uh, my dog was in my uh, home yeah. uh, protecting I, I, my I want family. you to look... I want you to look at the video again. And unless your daughter is a moron and can't follow your instructions, she did not say to her, wait outside. I understand she saw, that. Just a second. She saw her. She was in charge of your home that day. She permitted her to come in and put the drink down. She did that. She, you want to watch the video again, or no, do you acknowledge I don't need it? To watch so the you video acknowledge again. it. So I don't care what you said to her. When she got there, the circumstances were such that your daughter, who is taller than you are, was very happy to have her come in instead of saying, "You're not allowed to come into my house because we have this vicious dog." She's not vicious. We have. This... Oh yes, a dog that a dog that bites somebody that's coming in. She was with... protecting my children oh, in my I know. home. Just a second. I understand what you're saying, and I'm saying to you that she came in with your daughter within inches from her. And your daughter, when she opened the door, didn't you see the dog? No, yeah. I didn't realize. What? You didn't realize? No, it happened so fast. When I entered the door, I then realized, so I came back to rush to stop Myla, but she already got bit. It was too late. So it is my fault. Right! It's not your fault. I love that. It's too bad that you can't teach that to your mother. <laughs> It's really too bad you can't teach your mother to say, it's my fault. I have a dog that can be vicious. And so far, the dog has not been vicious to my children. I hope for your sake and your brother's sake that one day the dog doesn't get annoyed with one of your brothers. I just hope. I mean, this lady was about your size, the one that was killed by the two pit bulls. An older lady. 
So I'm hoping your mother chooses to have that instead of double locks taking care of her children. Great. But then she has to pay the consequences. I mean, I have to tell you, I'm old. I'm very old. I'm probably the oldest person that you know. <laughs> I have never read one article where a Shih Tzu killed a person. Mm -hmm. That's why I have Shih Tzus. You have Chihuahuas? Yes. I've never heard about a Chihuahua killing a person. <laughs> Ever! Myla Basin claims her former employer, Sarah Adams, owes for injuries after being bit by Sarah's dog. Sarah says Maya accepted a $300 settlement from the incident. Now, may I see the note that you had from a previous neighbor? Yeah, so this is a text message from Sarah to me stating that the neighbor done the... No, 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 I can read. Okay. Nobody can state to you. Okay. What was the name of the other woman that got bit by your dog? Your Honor, it was my neighbor and... But just they... a second. I asked you for a name. Did she get bitten anywhere around this time? No. What year? It was 2020, and it was a dog fight that me and her were both so trying to break just, up. Just a second. It was 2020. 2021, excuse me. Uh, okay. She is my neighbor. Just a, just a second. So, a year before, when in 2021? Give me a month. I don't remember. Summer, fall, winter, fall. spring? It was fall. fall. So you're talking about September or October? Somewhere around there, yes. Was she treated for the dog bite? No, Your Honor, it was Just not severe. To... The answer is no. She was not treated for her dog bite. Not seen by anybody. Correct. OK, can I see photographs of the dog bite, please? And I also have the first uh, initial appearance that I went to the hospital. Now you can step back up. I have another question for you. Now you were there. I heard you say from inside, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. At least twice. Now, after this happened, what did the plaintiff do? No. After this happened, just you and your two younger brothers were home. What did the plaintiff do? She was sitting outside on the porch. We came and gave her some towels. Who's we? My brother. So you got some towels. I saw she asked you for some towels. Mm -hmm. And then we tried to give her some Band-Aids. Put the paper down. You're annoying me. Um, she said, just let me come in. So I put away the dog. She said what? Just let me come in. So I put away the dog, and I put her... She was in my mom's bathroom, and we were finding Band-Aids and rinsing it off. And, and the then... Day, she came I didn't ask house. you a question. Now, she's in your mother's bathroom. She's trying to clean it up, and you put the dogs where? We have kennels for them, cages. And kennels? Mm-hmm. OK. You have kennels for them that you put them in at what time of day? Or when anybody is coming over? When do you use the kennels? Uh, we use them when we leave, or about to leave, or if somebody's coming over that they have a mint. OK. Now, you knew that the plaintiff was coming over. Your mother had told you the plaintiff was coming over. Yes. OK. And did your mother tell you in that phone conversation, would ordinarily ask, because I know I live with people your age and a, so a little bit older, when is McDonald's going to be here? When is it going to be here? Did you ask your mother that question? No. Did she give you any indication about how long it would take? No. How did you know when plaintiff arrived? The car pulled up. So you were looking outside for the car? Yes. Great. And when you were you looking outside for the car, you knew the food had arrived. Yeah. You went outside. Yes, I closed the door right behind me. Both of course. Me. You closed the door behind you. You went and got the food. There was extra food. She was clearly following you, and you clearly saw that she was following you into the house. No. Well, by the time you got to the front door, you want to see it again? You turned around. You saw that she was there behind you. That's when, uh, when I went in the house. That's no, 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 right before. Right before. Play it again, Sam. She's now out of the car. You're calling your brothers. Turn around, you look at her and smile, say nothing. She walks in. 
So you say nothing to her. Got it? Don't say, don't come in here. Don't come in, just leave it outside. You're both smiling. Smiling. You want to see it again? No, you were both smiling when you walked in. Play it again, Sam. Okay, thank you. Got it? Got it? Yeah. I okay, that's very good. Miss Bazine, if, quite frankly, the only thing that's distressing to me about your complaint is that you're only suing her for $3,500. That was... That's the only thing that is, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you could have just as easily been really seriously injured. And to me, people who keep will keep an aggressive dog, that's an aggressive dog, at home for whatever reason, especially a breed that has been determined to be a potentially dangerous breed of animal, deserves any consequences. This guy, this 20-year-old idiot, is going to jail. If I was sentencing him, he would go to jail for a very long time as an example. Maybe you have to set examples for people who allow innocent people to get killed because they like a particular breed of dog. I mean, I have to tell you, I'm old. I'm very old. I'm probably the oldest person that you know. <laughs> I have never read one article where a shih tzu killed a person. Mm -hmm. That's why I have shih tzus. I've never heard... I've heard them... Ah, oh, they nipped my finger, maybe. You know, they ripped my stockings. They ate the furniture leg. But I've never read a piece. You have chihuahuas. You have chihuahua. Yes. I've never heard about a chihuahua killing a person. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. So if you're dumb enough to have a dog, you have to accept the consequences. Mm -hmm. This guy is going to accept the consequences for his stupidity, for letting his pit bull roam around by going to jail. And you're going to accept the consequences by paying the exact amount that she's requesting, which is $3,500. Your counterclaim is stupid, yeah. and it's dismissed. Your Honor. And I'm done Your with Honor, you. Your Honor, we had I'm an agreement that she I'm signed. I'm done with you. We had oh. an agreement that she signed. I was very high on narcotics and coming under the influence of coming out of the hospital. I do not remember signing this. And if it was, it was for her to make me feel better because of mm -hmm. what happened. I'm sorry, Miss Basin. That's not going to fly with me. Defendant Sarah Adams is accusing her former employee, Myla Basin, of harassment after her dog bit Myla. Myla claims she did not agree to Sarah's $300 settlement. We had oh. an agreement that she signed. She oh. signed the agreement Just a for $300 and we were done. Okay, I'd like to see that. Please. If she... On top of that, the next day she came back into my house to meet the dog. I don't that care. That bit her. I don't care. You made what do me. I care? You made what me what meet I the dog. About that. Why would you bring she got the... bit. She, she, she picked at it. I have all this evidence that she picked at it, and that's what it turned into because she didn't take care of it. I have to tell you, I don't care whether she took care of it or whether it got infected. If I got bitten by somebody's vicious dog, I don't care whether it got infected or not. That's a traumatic event. The only reason but, why I was suing... But, it, just a second, but if you signed a release to her... She did. That's a different story. No, I didn't. She signed that Shh, paper. don't... Why did you sign this? This is clear. First, we'd vote Kevin. See, can I see it, please? And what is the date it on? <laughs> well, it says this agreement settles a dog bite that happened on 718. This was signed Shh, in October, I, November. Shh. If you shout out again. Because I was not... missing uh, all my money. I was not getting paid. I needed something from her. I come What do you mean? I don't hospital. understand what you mean you weren't getting. Here. When's, is there a date on this? And I do have other things I, that she signed if you need to verify the signature. I was very high on narcotics and coming under the influence of coming out of the hospital. I do not remember signing this. And if it was, it was for her to make me feel better because of mm -hmm. what happened. I'm sorry, Miss Basin. That's not going to fly with me. 
Well, That's not going to apply with me. If, if you accepted the three hundred dollars, shh. Pay careful attention to what I'm saying before you answer. If you and the defendant in any action can at any time, even without a lawyer, if neither of you have a lawyer, shh, I'm speaking, can settle a claim if they wish to settle a claim before getting the courts involved. That can happen. And that should happen in many instances. I'm not quite sure this one, but it certainly should happen more often than not. You settle for less than you were entitled to. You settle for $300. Did she give you $300? No, May I see that document, please? She did not. Okay. Let's see whether also she did. to she, a she, car she, battery? No, 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 no. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I agree to give Myla $300. Did she give it to you? No. Show me that you gave it to her. And I, when? I gave her cash. It's on camera at work. I handed her at work with my boss there. My boss, that, you can call him right now. I'm he not calling your boss. Listen to me. I'm not calling your boss. That's your problem to prove it. I also helped her when her car broke down. I don't I paid care. paid for a battery. I don't care. I paid for Listen lift to rides me. for her. I don't care. The dog care. bit me. Shh. I don't care. All I want to see is proof that you handed I her... I gave her cash. 300... I don't, I don't have proof because I gave her cash. Well, that's stupid. a problem for you. Did she, she give you cash? Your, your honor, no. no she just helped a, me out with a car battery and then she had come a loaded. Just a second. It doesn't say that you gave her $300. Your Honor, she's lying. It says I agreed to give her. She's lying. I handed her $300 mm -hmm. and made her, and had her sign that. Well, at work. We did it at work. She's lying. How she threatened Well, me. then, then I'm going to give this to you. She says you didn't give her the $300. You have no proof that you gave her the three hundred dollars. I you have no proof. I don't. I don't. You don't have any proof. Thirty five hundred dollars. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank We're you. done. This court is adjourned. I feel like if it would have been a Shih Tzu that bit her and did that damage, I feel like the judge would have favored, would have gone in my favor. And I knew I would get justice coming here for pit bulls. She takes care of the community. I'm so glad that happened that way. I had a lot of evidence and the reason why her bite turned into what it looks like now is because she didn't take care of it. She picked at it. I was happy to bring the kids food. I'm that type of person. Because I have documentation of her picking at it. She went to the hospital four different occasions. It's pretty tra traumatizing. I know she was fine because I have text messages that prove that she was fine. And all of a sudden the dog just got me. That it was her fault. She knew better than to go in the house. Right when I walked in the dog lynched and grabbed my leg. I walked in and then I realized there was a voice behind me. I, I went back and saw that Milo was back and she got bit by that time, so I went to go help her. Locked its jaw, the her tooth went really far down deep. Me and the baby girl both had to hit the dog to get him off of me. I picked up the dog and I put her in her kennel. Very terrifying, I still have PTSD, and even watching that video was shocking. She was constantly complaining about the dog bite to myself, my boss slandering me every chance that she got. Absolutely ridiculous. And I said, Milo, look, this needs to be settled once and for all. Bullied me and put me in a position, cornered me and made me do what she wanted to do. She was my boss, so whatever she said I had to do. What do you want? She said, give me $300 and I'll sign something saying we're done. So that's what I did. I don't know, some people are different. So I just wanted to point out a distinction in the articles that you brought in. I know you've been hearing these pit bull cases for decades, and so I understand your outrage every time you see one. But the distinction in the news articles that you brought in today as examples, as well as this case, there's a couple key differences. One, the main one being, in the newspaper articles, the dogs were outside, outside the home, outside the control. And in this case, the defendant wanted to make it especially known that the dog never left her home. However, from a legal standpoint, it's a more egregious charge if you allow your dangerous animal out and about in society without any sort of warning. However, just because it's inside your home doesn't absolve you from that responsibility. The plaintiff was still an invitee into the home. Like you had said, the daughter had every opportunity from the street all the way up the sidewalk, all the way onto the porch, and even into the screen door that you can see on the video opened up. Never once said, oh, just wait outside. Even with my or own put dogs. The, or put the... Or, put, or leave the, the food on the, on the porch. Even with my own dogs, golden retrievers, sometimes I never know if they're going to be overexcited. I say, just hang on one second out here. Let me make sure they're good. And I make sure they're happy, whatever. And then I say, come on in. So she had every opportunity to do that, and she didn't. So like you had mentioned to her, it's not like the plaintiff was a trespasser or trying to steal or trying to harm her children. And you're still responsible for your dangerous animals, even if they're inside your home. Yeah. So just think that's a word to the wise, that yeah. it's not just when they're outside your control that you can be held liable. I thought it was also interesting, now that I think about it and listen to what you're saying, 
usually when you have a dog that you know is dangerous because let us assume that I believed her when she said, you know, I said don't go into the house, which I don't believe her. You usually have a sign if you live in a private house and you're using the dog for protection mm -hmm. to have a sign, dangerous dog. Beware of dog. Beware of dog because somebody may come and deliver a package, mm -hmm. open your screen door. You never know when something can happen. So you at least give the public notice mm -hmm. that there is potentially a vicious neighbor, Shelley Burke, for a false claim leading to his arrest. Court come to order. All rise. Be seated, please. Hello, Judge. Why are you, Kevin? Case 2201, Parkinson mm -hmm. versus Burke. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Parkinson, you are suing the defendant, alleging that she caused you to be falsely arrested. That is correct. The defendant has a counterclaim. Her counterclaim is based upon the same incident for which you were arrested. She's claiming that you placed both herself and her passenger in her car in fear because you displayed erratic behavior and threatened them with a gun. And I gather that you two live in a gated community. Is that correct? Where is that? It's Arkansas. How long have you lived there? Eight years. And you? 26 years. This incident occurred on what date, sir? June 7th. Of last year? Yes. You were driving what kind of car, Mr. Parkinson? The gray Toyota Tundra. Sir, I think I know what that looks like. Could you bring that up for me Sorry. so that I can see? A Toyota Tundra. Yes. That doesn't sound like a little car. That sounds like a big car. It's a truck. Big. And what kind of car were you driving? A Toyota Camry. That I know what it looks like. Mm -hmm. It's a regular size, smallish car. This incident happened, according to the complaint, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That's correct. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Parkinson, since it's your claim for false arrest. Yes. So I want you to tell me your version of what happened on June 7th, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I assume you were on your way home. Yes, ma'am, I was. Go ahead. Ms. Burt pulled out of the station in front of my vehicle, directly in front of me, causing me to hit my brakes extremely hard. Okay. Either because she wasn't paying attention, right? Could be. Could be. Well, you wouldn't think. Just let me stop. When was the last time you were psychiatrically hospitalized? Never. Are you currently taking any psychotropic medication? No, ma'am. Were you intoxicated on the 7th of June? No, ma'am. 4 o'clock in the afternoon? No, ma'am. So, Mr. Parkinson, let me go back a little bit. This is a non-psychotic, not drunk person. So, if you're a thinking person, you know that if she pulled out, either she wasn't paying attention because she's not driving the Tundra, you are. You're driving a this, she's driving a this. So she wouldn't place herself and her son in harm's way purposely to pull out in front of your tundra. I would hope not. Well, I would say absolutely not. I don't have to even guess about that. She did not put herself purposely in harm's way. And so she pulled out in front of you. You had to put on your brakes hard. For her safety. You weren't thinking about her safety. You're not thinking about anybody's safety. It's a reaction. If somebody pulls out unexpectedly, you put your brakes on. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not going through your mind for her safety. It's put your brakes on. I mean, because if you were thinking about her safety, then we wouldn't be here today. So after you put on your brakes to stop, mm -hmm. Did anything happen? Uh, some objects in the back of my truck dislodged, some stuff in the back of the seat moved. And these things that got dislodged, did they get dislodged from the back cab in the truck or from the interior of the truck? Both in the bed and the interior. Okay. What got dislodged in the interior? Some paperwork, some clothing. Okay, so it fell on the floor? Yes. Okay, and in the back part of the truck? The bed of the truck, some tools shifted also. Didn't fall out of the truck. They just no. moved from one place to another. That is correct. What did you do next? I proceeded to follow Miss Burke into the village because I live in the village. When you say you followed her in, describe what you mean you followed her in. She was in front of me and I followed her into the village. <laughs> Don't play with me, sir. I read your complaint. You were tailing her. Yes. Yes. Well, let's say I was tailing her closely because you were annoyed. Yes. There we go. So you understand at this point, sir, that what you were involved in 
is road rage. You, not her. She was an accident. She was negligent. She wasn't paying attention. Let's say all of those things, not an on purpose, because that would be stupid, and she has not recently been psychiatrically hospitalized. You, on the other hand, made a purposeful decision to tail her because you were annoyed that your tools moved. That's what happened. Would that be a fair statement, Mr. Parkinson? Yes, I was annoyed. Okay, you were annoyed, and what followed was an incident of road rage. Your husband, you've been in the car with him when he's had a little bit of road rage? Think about it before you answer me. Have you been in the car with him when he has reacted in a different way from the way you would have reacted to another car? He has very many. Question. The answer is either yes or no. Have you been with him in the car when he has reacted in a way that you would not have reacted in a traffic situation? Yes, ma'am. I assume that the police searched the truck. The police searched me. Did they search the truck? I gave the police the authority to search my truck willingly. <laughs> they searched the truck. Brian Parkinson claims his neighbor, Shelley Burke, owes for the cost of being falsely arrested. Shelley is countersuing Brian for emotional distress, saying he threatened her with a gun. And when he's reacted that way, did you ever say anything to him? It was minimal. I didn't respond to it. Really? Okay. Good. When my husband gets involved in one of those road rage things because somebody cuts him off, I'm all over him like <laughs> white on rice. <laughs> Are you crazy putting me in jeopardy because you got a bad temper? That's what I say to my husband. She can attest to that. <laughs> me, I once said up to a police officer who pulled him over, give him a ticket. <laughs> give him two tickets. <laughs> Maybe he'll stop. <laughs> right? True. So now you're involved in a road rage, hissy fit, and you're tailgating her. How many blocks did you tail her? Or how many miles did you tail her? Don't look as if you don't understand my question. No. Okay, good. Three quarters of a mile, if that. Okay, well, that's a pretty long way, three quarters of a mile. So you were tailing her for three quarters of a mile. And at some point, did she make a turn with her car to avoid you tailing her? Yes. A 90 degree turn. Yes. So tell me, now you're following her for three quarters of a mile, and she makes this turn. Yes. Now, when she made that sharp turn, did you follow her? Nope. No. No. No, no, no. I know you didn't follow her because she made that turn to get away from you. Do you understand? I've been on this earth a very long time. You, Mr. Parkinson, are an ordinary guy with a bad temper. So I've played this scene in my head, both from personal experience and from watching other jerks like you, in my head, a hundred times. So when she made this turn, she made the turn to get away from you, and you said, well, I accomplished my mission. I jarred her a little bit. That's if I believe your story, all of it. And you went home. Now, I'm to the point where she makes the turn and you went home. So far, correct? That is correct. Does that look familiar to you, Mr. Parkinson? Yes, it does. Okay, so I would like you to walk over there, show me where the gas station is, and show me where you started to follow her. I'll be more than happy to. Of course, it says Shell right here. That's where the incident began. Right. She pulled out a medium flare me, causing me to hit my brakes. Just a second. So she caused you to hit your brakes? Yes. That and I then know. she turned right. I followed her into the village. Everybody gets close. No, no, no. Just show me. I followed her into the village and right show here. me where you proceeded. Then we drove down and she turned, I believe, here or here. Turned how? To the right. Okay. And you proceeded to your house? Yes. Okay. Now you can step back. So she turned off to get away from the maniac who was tailgating her because she had made a mistake in pulling out in front of him at a gas station. You go home, and what do you do when you get home? I back my truck in. And then what did you do? I got out of my truck to move the tools and stuff that had shifted to the front of the bed to the back of the bed where I can get to them better for work because I had to slam on the brakes twice. <laughs> Mr. Parkinson. Do you know what doesn't make sense to me? Your husband isn't a stupid man, is he? No, ma'am. No. Now, I don't drive a truck, but I know when I go to the store 
and buy two gallons of chicken soup with matzo balls. And I go to put them in the car. I say to myself, Judy, it's possible that you're gonna have to stop short, that a light's gonna turn red. So I put the chicken soup in between the front seat and the back seat of the car, and I move the seat so it's stable, so that if my car stops a little short, because even if it stops a little short, my chicken soup would be on the floor of the car. So I make sure that it doesn't move. It just doesn't make sense to me why you wouldn't secure this toolbox any better. If you stop short, those tools are naturally going to move, right? The weight of the tools is mm -hmm. actually gonna move. Okay, so I just am putting this whole thing in my head. Do you need a permit to buy a gun in Arkansas? You do not have to have a permit to carry in Arkansas. It is but an open carry state. But you have to make an application. State. You have to apply to buy a handgun or long rifle. Have you ever done that? Yes, I have, multiple oh, times. just a second. So the answer is yes. Yes. What have you applied to buy? Numerous guns. Which you still have? Yes. I assume that you keep those guns within the proximity of your home. They are all kept in the house, Your Honor. The next thing, according to you, the police show up at your door. That is correct. And they have a conversation with you about a report Yes, they that did. someone has, in your area, has complained that there were shots fired uh, by you out of your truck during this road rage incident. That's what the statement says. That's what the statement says. And I assume that the police searched the truck. The police searched me. Did they search the truck? I gave the police the authority to search my truck willingly. <laughs> they searched the truck. I is told the answer. Them they could. Mr. Parkinson, I know that you think that I'm stupid. I know that you must think that I'm stupid. Did you give the police permission to search your house? The answer is yes or no. No. Of course not. Because in your house, they would have found multiple guns. Correct. In your house, just that's a yes or a no. In your house, they would have found multiple guns. Yes. You keep multiple guns in your house, but don't carry one around for protection in your truck. When did they arrest you? I was arrested on August 2nd. Okay, and? I was told to call the village police department. I promptly called them, and they told me I had a warrant for my arrest. And? I was very shocked. And? And I was charged with felony assault, and I had to pay 1080 to bond and fees to get out of jail. And? I was released from jail. And then on the 17th, is that correct? 19th. The 19th of August, I had a court date. And? It was Noel Prost. Due to the request of the Village Police Department for lack of evidence. Okay. And? So I'm out that amount of money for bond for a false arrest because a false statement and half a day. Okay, we're going to find out if it's a false statement. So far, I'm not thinking it's a false statement. I have to let that sink into you, Mr. Parkinson. So far, I'm not thinking it's a false statement. I'm going to hear the defendant. I know one thing for certain. You were involved in a road rage incident and you were the perpetrator. Whether or not you flashed a gun, she's gonna tell me. We certainly know that you have guns, according to you, multiple guns, in your house. I suppose you have a couple for you and a couple for your wife. Who else lives in your house with you? Just two of us. Just the two of you. How many guns does he have in the house? So when I go around this one S car, I hear a pop. And I'm like, oh my God, he just shot at us. I said, call 911. When I start coming back down again, I look in my passenger mirror. I saw the spark. I saw it. I'll never forget it. He popped the gun again. Brian Parkinson is accusing his neighbor, Shelly Burke, of lying to the police and getting him falsely arrested. Shelly claims Brian was shooting his gun while following her home. How many guns does he have in the house? We have two long guns that he used for hunting and we each have a handgun. And you each have a handgun? Yes. Good. They are in Just... travel cases that are locked. You want to know something? I don't believe that. But well, we have grandchildren that come over. When there were grandchildren, you may lock them. Okay, now we're going to you, Miss Burke. Did you see him? when you cut him off? I did not. Let's start out with the fact that you were exiting the gas station. Mm -hmm. You didn't see him. You weren't paying attention. You didn't look that way. Whatever it was, you cut him off. So let's mm -hmm. start from there. 
You got it. This gray truck comes up behind me, swerving and revving his motor and all that. Got as close as he possibly could. Why don't you show me I over will there. do that. <laughs> okay. There's two lanes going into the village. There's a left and a right lane. I go left, he goes right. Well, I get in front of him, and then he starts getting behind me, swerving his car back and forth, revving his motor. He is so close. He's probably closest to me and him. I mean, he's not a car length away. He's right up on my bumper and revving his truck, revving his truck, and I'm going the speed limit. Then I turn, I make a left. He's still right on me, never lets up. It's kind of a tricky area because it's, it's curvy. So when I go around this one s curve, I hear a pop. And I'm like, oh my God, he just shot at us. And I said, call 911. When I start coming back down again, I look in my passenger mirror. I saw the spark. I saw it. I'll never forget it. And he heard it. We heard, even on the phone call, I think you can possibly hear it. He popped the gun again. And then he's on 911 talking to her, and the lady's saying, be calm, be calm. And I'm leaning down in the car. He's trying to tell me to go. He looks like he's going, going on past us. But when he does that, he rolls down the window, and you can see him holding a gun in his hand. And he says something I don't hear. I can't understand what he's saying. He's getting the license plate numbers. We thought he kept on going. So, so I, your son got the license number. Yeah, he got the license plate number. He's on the phone with 911 at this time. And that's what was given to the police? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. OK. Well, I got the 911 call here with us today. I would like to hear it. Step back. Can I hear the 911 call, please? Go, 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 go! 911, what's your emergency? Somebody shooting at us! What? It's a pop. Right before we yelled at his truck. He was shooting at us. His license plate number is. I need all units. We got a vehicle that is shooting. The complainant's on 911 saying the vehicle is shooting at them. I'm fixing to run the tag. Who am I speaking with? This is uh, Leslie Scott Rogers. And you said what kind of vehicle was it? It was a gray Toyota Tundra. Go. It's coming back no. on a gray Toyota Tundra, and that's what the complainant says. It's a 2014 Toyota Tundra. Okay, start that 911 call all over again. Pay careful attention, because I thought at the beginning of this tape, I too heard a shot. Could we start again, please? Take your hand out of your pocket. Go, 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 go! 911, what is your emergency? Somebody go shoot at us! There it is. There it is. Got it. You can stop it. That doesn't sound like a gunshot. Mm -hmm. Your case is dismissed, Mr. Parkinson. Your case is dismissed. I have a counterclaim, so stand where you are. The counterclaim is by Ms. Burke for the emotional trauma that she, let's just talk about her, went through as a result of your road rage and shooting your gun at her, which you did. You probably didn't shoot it to hit her or to hit the car, because I don't think you're that stupid. Stupid, yes, but I don't think that's stupid. I think you did it to frighten her, just to frighten her. Then I think that you brought the gun that you keep in your truck when you work, maybe on your person, which you probably have a perfectly legal right to do, and you took the gun, you said, just in case something happens, because I did, in fact, shoot my gun in her direction, because I heard it on the 911 call. I better put it in the house. I better put it in the house. So you took the gun and you brought it into the house and then saying, oh, police are here. Oh, well, search my truck. You won't find a gun. Search me. You won't find a gun on me. Don't search my house. And I guarantee you that you didn't say to the policemen when they came, I do have a gun, but it's locked in my house. Show me something where you told the police that you had a gun, but it was in the house. Nothing, because it didn't happen. Based upon that 911 call, the fact that you were involved in a road rage incident with her, tailing her at least three quarters of a mile, right on her tail, causing that 911 call, as far as I'm concerned, that's trauma. My heart would have been racing triple time, because I don't know whether behind me is a lunatic or just a stupid guy who can't control his temper, and his wife hasn't been able to beat it out of him for the last how many years you're married. Because there's no question, he's done that sort of thing before. Maybe not with a gun. Maybe not with a gun. When was the last time, sir, prior to this time that you were arrested? When was the last time prior to this time that you were arrested? Year. 19. Then 19, your age or 2019? 2019. 2019. 2019. For what? Now, don't think, I know, that if I were arrested once, a couple of years ago, I would have remembered what it was. Well, I was arrested for supposed harassment, violation of no contact order. What else? Now, don't look at her. 
I, it's been so many times, I can't remember. So you've been arrested multiple times? Yes. Okay, good. Nice. You picked him. I don't I see how this pertains. Your how honor. does it pertain? I do so your propensity for violence, sir. This has nothing to do with Propen violence. No, it does have to do with her counterclaim. $5,000 is what your counterclaim is for. Is that correct? Judgment on the counterclaim for $5,000. Your claim is dismissed. We're done. This court is adjourned. It was a very bad day. We do not carry weapons in our vehicles. I won't even go out at night anymore because I'm scared he's coming by my house. She described in the report a black weapon. We don't have a black handgun. The truth is I saw the gun. Well, I think she created a situation by admitting she didn't see me. I don't understand why he would even say that. People won't drive stupid, let them, and just back off. The plaintiff was certainly not forthcoming. I let him search my truck. Mm -hmm. I let him search me. What about your house? Did you tell them I do have a gun, but it wasn't out, it wasn't me, because I leave my guns at, my two long guns and my two short guns at home? Mm -hmm. You could hear the pop in the first part of that, when, call. when he was hysterical. Mm -hmm. And believe me, he wasn't hysterical. Just because and someone's tailing just you. Just because someone's tailing you, you don't call 911. You yeah. pull into your house and you lock the door fast. <laughs> yeah. You only do that if someone's pointing your gun. And so there's no question. There's no question yeah. that he did that. How dare you put someone in fear purposely? You're just doing it to create a fear, fear in someone. And to do that, especially to a woman driving in front of you in a small Camry, it says more about him than it says anything else, I think. At that moment, I put him in jail for five days and say... Lee and Robert Burroughs are suing their former friends, Marina and David Quadra, for a legal eviction and property damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everybody. Hello, Judge. Case 2072, Burroughs versus Quadra. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Quadra, you were living in a home, in a house? Correct, a town yeah. home. That you didn't own. And for how long had you been renting that home? We did not rent out the, the home. How before. long, if you didn't own it, then you were renting it? We rented it for two years, Your Honor. It gets scarier if you have a fixed position in your head so that you're not listening to my questions. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. When did your lease start? July of 2020. And when was it to terminate? It was terminated August 1st, 2022. And it was terminated by an eviction? Correct. And you were evicted because the landlord said that you sublet the apartment to these people and their family? Correct. And they were people who you knew, both in the military? Just no him. What do you do? I'm a federal employee. And you? I'm active duty, ma'am. But you knew each other from work? Correct. Where did you move in August? National City, Your Honor. How far is that from your prior residence? Uh, it's about 30 miles south, Your Honor. Are you in a home that you own or that you rent? We are still renting. How much are you paying in rent? $21.50 a month. You have a signed lease? We do. When did that lease start? August 1st, 2022. And why did you choose to live in National City? It is closer to where he is stationed. It is also the... Shh. Don't speak. Yes, Your Honor. How much closer? Um, to his job. To his job. It went from a 30-minute drive to a 15-minute drive. Okay, so that's better. Correct. You were evicted. You were served a notice of eviction on what date? They let us know a month before August. They gave us a 30-day notice. Now, did the plaintiffs have any furniture in the home that you were evicted from? Prior to us being evicted, yes. Yes prior to your being evicted. And what furniture did they have? Two dressers and a bunk bed. Anything else? That's as far as furniture. And what furniture did you have in there prior to being evicted? A full living room. And when um, did you move that out? On what date? The 30th of July, two days before our moving date. So you moved out all of your furniture? Correct. And how much were you paying in rent in the place from which you were evicted? $25.95. Oh, I didn't write that down. How much were you paying in the new place? The place we are in now? Twenty-one fifty. So you're paying less rent? Correct. It's substantially smaller. And substantially closer to his place of employment? Correct. Good. Now, do you want to tell me your version of how they came to be living in your house? We received a call one night. It was very late, 10 p.m. Robert was very upset, crying. He had nowhere to go. He? Correct. Robert had nowhere to go, and Kelly was asking for a divorce. He asked if he could crash on the couch. We have a toddler at home, so I asked him to sleep in our guest bedroom instead of the couch. Okay. 
He stayed that first original night, and the next day he needed to job hunt as he was jobless. We offered to watch his child. He looked for the job and he came home. He asked us if he could stay for a while in that guest bedroom until he got onto his feet with the job. He offered money to just help out with utilities and How food. much? A thousand dollars. A thousand a month? No, just a thousand. And our words when he had asked and we asked him how long do you think it will take you to get on your feet, it was just a couple weeks. Okay, so he was offering a thousand dollars. Correct. Which was forty percent of your rent to stay for two weeks to stay in your guest bedroom. Mm-hmm. Pretty decent. Did he give you the thousand dollars? He did. And he gave you the thousand dollars on what date? He gave us the thousand dollars on May 29th. And when did he start staying there? He started staying with us May 21st. Then what happened? He stayed with us for about a week. Everything was okay. He job hunted. I helped with the child. Within this week, he... Look at me. I'm sorry. He confided in us that he wanted to work on his marriage with Kelly. He did not want the divorce. It was something that she had asked for. They wanted to work on it together and had asked if Kelly could come around to stay with him and the children and work on their marriage. When he moved into the guest room, did he take the children? Did he he have the children with him? He did, but it was just on certain nights they were sharing. And then he asked if Kelly could come as well. Correct. The wife. And what did you say? Why couldn't he go home? He could not go home due to their relationship with her parents. Their parents... Oh, she was living living with her parents. Correct. They were both living with her parents. Correct. So he said, I can't go home. We want to work on the marriage. Could we come and stay here with you? Correct. They have two kids? They have three. They have three kids and how many dogs? Four. Four dogs. So far, you get four stars if you let her come. (laughs) I wish it would have worked that way. No. You don't understand that that's where I'm at so far. Of course. So now, May 29th, he gives you the $1,000. She moves in when with the dogs? So we had a long trip planned to Vegas. We let them know that after we had left, she could come stay while we were gone. What month? June? June. Correct. How long were you away? We were away for five to six days. Well, what was he going to do when she came there with the four dogs, three kids, after six days? What was the plan? This was never a a plan of, here's a lease agreement you are going to rent from us. It was just that I need somewhere to stay. Can they please come for this short period of time until we figure this out? Great. Okay. Now let me hear your version of the events. When you went to stay there with your children, you were having trouble with your wife. It's incorrect. Incorrect. What I said was, because I believe her, I believe that you called her and said exactly what she said. She told me. I mean, I don't have to have Whitney read it back. I believe that that's what you said. So I don't want to hear baloney about school districts. You were having trouble with your wife. And later today... You can't have it both ways. It's a complicated Dion, this is a, It's not complicated. It's very simple. You didn't have a written contract. If you had an oral contract, that's one thing. Kelly and Robert Burroughs claim their former friends, Marina and David Quadra, owe for an illegal eviction. Marina and David are countersuing, saying Kelly and Robert caused them to be evicted. So when you went to their house and you wanted to work on your marriage, you could have gone back to your in-laws. Yes, that's correct. You could have. Why didn't you? Uh, The reason why we decided to split up was because we're trying to keep our kids in the same school district. So with having four dogs, that's impossible to keep in an HOA. So she decided to go with her parents. I decided to stay back to finish the school year with the kids, still being in May, they can finish in the same school district. That's why I decided I needed a mailing address so that they could stay in the same school district. So you mean this discussion that she just said to me about you having problems, marital problems Irrelevant. with your wife, that never happened? Irrelevant. It's just... It's no, that's not what I said. What I said was, because I believe her. I believe that that's what happened. I believe that you called her and said exactly what she said. She told me. I mean, I don't have to have Whitney read it back. I believe that that's what you said. So I don't want to hear baloney about school districts. You were having trouble with your wife. No, ma'am. No. No. And you didn't tell her that. We had been moved out of our old place of six years in El Cajon, and we were trying for six months to find a new place. So, yes, it does put a lot of stress on a relationship, but we did not have any marital... Mr. Burroughs, you know what my strong suit is, and there's no question that the cameras just caught your face. My strong suit is being able to spot a lie from a mile away. 
And I'm telling you that there's no question that you called her late at night and said, I'm having trouble with my wife. She asked me for a divorce. Can I come and stay with you? There's no question that whether it was true or not, I don't know, because clearly you're a liar. So maybe it wasn't true, but that's what you told her. Your Honor, may I speak? You want me to call your parents? Please do. Would you like me to call your parents? I'm just asking you, would you like me to call your parents? No. Of course not. That's an easy thing for me to do. Part of what was going on was that we lived in our home for six years and the homeowners had moved back in and so they asked us to leave and we had been actively searching for a home. So yes, it did put a bit of a strain on our marriage and I took my dogs with me so that I can keep my operating business at my parents' house because I am a dog boarder, dog sitter. And I did not want to shut my business down. And during this time, tensions, little things happening at my parents' house. So I said, you need to go see if you can rent a room or find somebody that can help you in the meantime so we can actively keep searching for a place for our family. We tried five different homes and we didn't. I don't care. Them. What I said to your husband was he lied to me because there's no question that he called and whether it was true or not that he said to your friends, I need a place to go. Do you have a place that I could stay on the couch? There's no question he said that to her. That is true. Yes, that is true. Okay. I mean, well, mistake. then I want you to introduce your husband to the truth. Is it true? It's something that he hasn't met, because that's not what he told me what happened. Correct. So that was a mistake of his. Mistake. It, that was a mistake. And you know what happens when you lie to me once? Your case is dismissed. Because what you're suing for is being evicted, and you go, blah, 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 emotional distress. You lie to me once, your case is dismissed. Now, we're going to come over here. You have a counterclaim. Your counterclaim is money owed for property damage Correct. and for damages for eviction. Because what happened was your landlord evicted you because she comes with her four dogs, three gerbils, two parakeets to your house, and the owner of your condo doesn't want her any more than the owner of their last condo. Of course. Didn't want them. Got to save your money, buy your own house, so you can have as many dogs and parakeets as you like. You moved into a place that's nicer? Absolutely not. Tell me what the papers said when your landlord notified you of the eviction. Do you have them? We do. I'd like to take a look at yes, them. Yes, no problem. There was also in that piece of paper a $250 fine through our HOA from the whole commotion that he caused the day of asking them to leave. Just a second, you were a month-to-month -month tenant? Correct. You didn't have a lease for two years. You were a month-to-month -month tenant. We had a year lease, and then when the year was up, we moved month-to-month. -month. They didn't evict you. No, they just gave us, they asked Just a us second. To leave. Your lawsuit is for damages, putative damages for an eviction. You weren't evicted. Well, we were asked to leave if we... No, they just decided the not to renew your month-to-month -month lease. Due to the... Lies. I don't care what it was due to. Listen, if I owned a property and you let three kids, four dogs, moved in to my condo for six days, I wouldn't renew your lease on a month-to-month -month basis either. I don't care whether they were there for two days, four days, a week, or a month. You understand? Understood. Okay, so there was no eviction. So the punitive damages for that, I forget it. Money owed for property damage. When they moved out, what did they damage? And how much did it cost you? There was a hole in the molding from moving the dressers down our stairs. They bonked it, bringing it out angrily because they were mad that we asked them to leave. We have the letters from our landlord stating everything they had to deduct from our deposit. Just a second, a hole in the wall. And how much? was the hole in the wall. The molding was... No, just to look at the paper and tell me how much was the hole in the wall. The painting was 180 and the molding repair was 200. How? Oh. Did you damage the molding when you were moving a dresser out of the house? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, not that you're aware of. You want to try the truth now? Was there a hole that you created moving a dresser out of the house? When David and I were moving our dresser over the stairs, down the stairs... Who's David? the defendant. So you were moving out the dresser with him? Careful, introducing you to the truth. Did you move the dresser with him? Uh, I did help move the furniture The out. case is dismissed. The counterclaim, the, the counterclaim the likewise is dismissed. We're done. Thank you. This court is You're adjourned. On. I take it as a win. The initial suit was them against us. Their suit got dismissed. We lost a lot of things and a lot of wages. That was just us 
being good friends, we definitely learned our lesson. We will never help another crying husband on our doorstep claiming divorce again. People that are offering to be nice to you in, in times of need don't charge you. They kind of cried, oh, marriage and divorce the whole time, knowing that we're young and married. It's something we take seriously in our lives. And we're still trying to build our lives back. I should actually make a party to introduce all those people <laughs> to Mr. Truth. I agree. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of mismatch. It doesn't make sense. If yeah. you're going to stay with a friend for a few days, you don't bring a bunk bed and two dressers. No. I've stayed with friends for a couple days, long weekend. You bring a bag with some right. clothes. Even you with your kids. Yeah, you don't bring furniture. You don't bring any of that. So there's no. a lot of discrepancies. Things that didn't make sense. If it doesn't make sense, it's usually not true. Agreed. Case 2041, Dion versus Everson. All parties, please step forward. Caitlin Dion claims her former employer, Scott Everson, breached their contract to buy her baby shoe business. All right, what looks to be a complicated case actually is merely just a contract case. Ms. Dion, you had a side business of making baby shoes, and I assume that those are the baby shoes. Yes, it was a full The business. defendants had a children's clothing website, and they became familiar with your baby shoes, and they were interested in buying your business. You entered into a contract wherein I believe that they agreed to pay you $30,000 for the business. Is that correct? That was the asking price. There was never a written contract signed. That's incorrect. Just a second. You entered into a deal for $30,000 and an employment contract without a written contract? I have the written contract here, Your Honor. Oh, yeah. I would say goodbye to you all if there wasn't a written contract. There was a draft of a contract the terms of which changed numerous times over no, the years. No, 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 you can't, you can't change a written contract. Was it a written contract that was signed by both parties? No, it was never signed. He refused signed. to sign it, even though he was the one that wrote it himself and emailed it to me himself. You called him within the period that you were supposed to be working for him and said, this is too much for me, I can't do it. I read your complaint. Do you understand? That's a breach of your contract, if there ever was a contract. Caitlin Dion claims her former employer, Scott Everson, breached their contract to buy her baby shoe business. Well, then there was never a meeting of the minds. May I see that? This is going to be a that's, much easier case than I thought. That's incorrect. I have Just audio. Just a second. This is going to be a much easier case than I thought. That's the latest draft of an agreement of which there were several drafts prior to that. Listen to me, sir. It doesn't make any difference to me. She's suing you because you paid her pursuant, I assume, under this non-contract, according to you, $31,000. That pay. was both for a piece of her business and for her staying on for a period of, I don't know, four months, six months? That was never um, oh, yeah. agreed to. Neither was the $30,000. Do you understand? You can't yeah. have it both ways. It's a complicated Dion. This is case. A, it's not complicated. It's very simple. You didn't have a written contract. If you had an oral contract, that's one thing. I do have that, actually. I have audio that we can play right now telling him that he promises to pay me $30,000 regardless of how long I worked for him. Just a second. The original deal that you had was for $30,000. There was actually an original deal that was much more than the contract he Ms. took Dion, months to how should, Ms. Dion, change to Ms. Dion, there's no question that under the terms of what you both thought was reasonable, you agreed to accept $30,000 from him for the business, and you would stay with the business for a period of time, either four months or six months, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but that is totally reasonable because he wasn't in the baby shoes business. According to your complaint, you were going through some marital difficulty, you were going through other major problems, and you called him within the period that you were supposed to be working for him and said, this is too much for me, I can't do it. I read your complaint. Do you understand? That's a breach of your contract, if there ever was a contract. That was, listen to if me carefully. Look in the contract, L listen, it says that he would take this, away $400 per week that I did not this, work for him. This is not, Staying listen to me, Ms. Young, listen to me very carefully. This is an unsigned contract. Why did Therefore, you send it to me then? Just a second. He gave you $31,000. He did not. He gave me $5,000. Just a second. He says he gave you over the period of time $30,000. Did, did you not. give her? I have to. Uh, just a second. In the period of time that we've known Ms. Dion and worked with her, I've given her $31,668. I have proof that says that otherwise. Was... I'd like to see it. Here are my hours. No, 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 no. Not, 
those are paychecks, paycheck stubs, of which the, of the 31,000 she received, 10,000 were- That were not part were, of the business purchase pay, price. Listen. No, you're right, that was I, pay listen, stubs. I have to explain something to you. There was no written contract and clearly no meeting of the minds based upon what you both told me today. Yep, yep, what was yeah, I supposed just a sec. to do? I signed the contract and gave it back to him. Then you should have done nothing. If he didn't sign it, you should have done nothing. I was a single mother at the time. Did he did not. You have to understand, this is a court. He had Where's all this of is my a court. Asset. This is a court, it's not Dr. Phil. You had no written contract, and if you had no written contract, you had to have an I have oral contract. I do. No, then you had to have an oral contract, and that oral contract clearly did not reflect a meeting of the minds of both of you. If he didn't sign this contract, and whether it was for your business or for your employment, are you saying to me that you did not receive from him? I'm just curious, because he has the documentation to show me that you did not receive from him $31,000. I have documentation. Yep. Just Sorry, I thought that was a question you asked. That was a question, that you did not receive from him. I don't care if it was the business or as a worker that you did not receive from him during a period of time $31,000. I did not. That's incorrect. I have my paychecks. I have the down payment that he made. I have the installments that he made. Uh, just a all second. All of which add up to $31,000. Just a second. Add them up and I asked you a question. How much was it? Your paychecks and the down payment he made on your business. How much was it? I want to know if it was 30. He said it was $31,000. He paid me $16,666 for my business. My paychecks do not matter. They were not a part listen, listen, of the business did you file, agreement. Did you file your case in small claims? That is claim? not a I, part of my business. Did you file your case in small claims court? Yes. Very, Working just a hourly was not a part Ms. of Dion, the contract. Pay careful attention to me. If you filed your case in small claims court, I'm going to give you an opportunity to go back there. If you think you have a case, I do not. I do not believe that there was a meeting of the minds when there's a contract unsigned for over $10,000. That's absolutely ludicrous. As long as I'm comfortable with the fact that you got paid during a period of time, $30,000, so that you worked and you got paid. The contract for the sale of the business, as far as I'm concerned, was never consummated. I'm going to let you go try to explain your position to a judge in either superior court, because I don't think small claims courts hear cases up to $10,000. I don't know where you're from. That's where are you correct. from? Utah. It's actually $11,000 hmm? in Utah. Well, go back to Utah. This case is dismissed without prejudice. We're done. This court is adjourned. I reminded him over the period of two months. Paid her $31,000 for her time in her business. Give me the contract, give me the contract, give me the contract. She wanted a job, that's how she first approached us. She applied for a job with us. My working for him hourly was never part of the agreement. I wish I Bobby Gonzalez is suing his neighbors, John and Heather Gilbert, for truck damage. Court come to order, all rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2095, Gonzalez versus Gilbert. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Gonzalez. Yes, ma'am. You're seeking substantial amount of money to refurbish your car after it was hit by the defendant's car while your car was parked. Yes, ma'am. The defendants are seeking the same amount of money because they say that despite the fact that one of them did in fact hit your parked car, it was your fault. That's your defense? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma who was driving? I was driving. Uh -huh. Okay. Mr. Gilbert, on what date did this incident happen? February 3rd. What time? About 5, 5.30 in the morning. Who was in the car with you? Nobody. I was by myself. I was going to pick up my son. You were going to pick up your son from where? From his mother's house to take him to school. And where does he go to school that he has to be there at 5.30 in the morning? He doesn't have to be there at 5.30. I have to leave at 5.30 to get him there by 7. Do you take him to school every day? No. What was different about February 3rd? His mother, stepfather, and the rest of their family was out of town. They had asked me to take him to school that day. Just for that one day? Yep. Yep is not an answer. Oh, yes, Yes, yes an answer. Okay, so it's about 5.30 in the morning, and... I left my house, it was Look raining, it was cold. It's the, pretty much the same route I take every day, not at that same time. I was approaching a stop sign at an intersection by the plaintiff's house, and I seen, I guess, either a reflection or what I thought were lights headed in my direction, so I swerved and- Okay, uh, you're still traveling, so you're moving. Does somebody have a diagram of where this happened? Yeah. There it is. 
Okay. You were approaching a stop sign. Yeah, I was approaching an intersection. So right ch on... Ch ch were you there? No, ma'am. Sit down. Yes, ma'am. You were approaching an intersection. Yeah. It's, it's a two-way road. Yeah. And it looks to me from that, is that an accurate representation? Yeah, except for there was another vehicle on the other side of the road. Okay, but it looks to me that you're traveling sort of in the middle of the road. Yeah, it floods. Okay, and a car is coming from something. You're not sure what. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't sure what. It We're was not sure way. what. And I uh, swerved. I, and I you, just got over to the proper side of the road. And your car swerved. And when your car swerved, it hit that blue car that's sitting there, that's the plaintiff's car that was sitting in front of his house. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, is not an SBM. answer. Yes, okay. Now, do you want to tell me what you did next? I went through the intersection, turned around to follow what I thought might have been a vehicle headed in my direction, and when I didn't see a vehicle, I took my vehicle home, I parked it, I got my insurance information, my driver's license, and I walked back to his house to trade insurance information with him. Okay, you have a video of this incident? Yes, ma'am. From where? From my surveillance camera. Is it set up for me to watch it yes, here? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm ready. That's your car, sir? That's... Yes. Okay, let's see that again. Notice how the truck is covered. Okay, so you hit the plaintiff's car hard enough to push it up on the curb. Speed limit's 30 miles an hour. I've just asked you a question. Yes, ma'am. It looks as if you hit it hard enough to push it up on the curb. Yes, I did. But you told me a moment ago, Mr. Gilbert, and you just piped in that the speed limit there is 30 miles an hour. You said you were slowing down for a stop sign. I said I was approaching a stop sign. Well, when you're approaching a stop sign, you don't approach a stop sign at 30 miles an hour especially if it's in a neighborhood that you've been in. But according to you, you drive that neighborhood regularly. Yep. However, not at that time. That's what you said. Yes, ma'am. So if you are approaching a stop sign, when I approach a stop sign, and if I know there's a stop sign there, I start applying my brakes a little bit before. Now, I do drive with some people who sort of like to play chicky with a stop sign, you know? Maybe the stop sign is going to move. Maybe it's going to become a welcome mat. So they wait until they get right up to it and put their brakes on. But that's not what you told me you did. No, ma'am. Okay. So now I'm going to say, if you were going very slowly, sir, approaching a stop sign, you wouldn't have hit his car with such force that you push him up on the curb. Okay. Your defense is to this action, as I said, that he was parked and he had this car that was covered and it was parked the wrong. facing the wrong direction, which is totally irrelevant as to was facing the wrong Not according direction. According to Texas state it law. Was on, it's covered over, so you don't know which direction it was facing and certainly the light wasn't on it. If you're staying... I've, I've passed, like, I've passed this... I didn't ask you for anything. You weren't there. Yes, ma'am. You weren't there. Yes, ma'am, but I've... Been, she lives I've in the neighborhood. Li she I've drives by it every day. For, Just for a second. Years. What do I need that for? I have a video. Okay. I have a Did video. Did you see the stop sign in the video? No. You have I no idea you how close I was. You just told me you were approaching a stop sign. Yeah, Would there is a stop sign. There Would is you? a stop sign. Would you read that back to me? I was approaching a stop sign. Does he say I slowed down? I was approaching a stop sign. I don't remember. It's about I didn't say. I, you, I did not. Now say, you can leave. I did not now, say I was slowing now down. Now you can leave. I did not say I was slowing down. I said I was approaching a stop sign. Okay, that's what I thought. But that's why we have Whitney. Let's see. He says he was approaching a stop sign at an intersection by the plaintiff's house. And I can see either a reflection or what I see lights headed in my direction, so okay, I swerve. Now I, I would like to see that video again one more time. I would like to see if I see something coming towards you. Actually, I don't see another vehicle coming towards you. Is that a truck parked there? It's a food truck behind it. It's like catty corner to his vehicle. There's a food trailer there that had all of the light, food like, right. A food truck on the other side of the street. Yes, ma'am. A food truck that you could see, but that's part. Well, that, I, I assume since there was no actual lights coming, I assume maybe that's what reflected, light reflected off of. You don't assume anything. All you know is you saw something that made you swerve. Yes, ma'am. Whether it was there or not there. So am I getting the fact that your total defense is based on the fact that his car shouldn't have been parked there? Yes, ma'am. Or cover. 
Yeah, well, but that's a finable offense, Mr. Gilbert. That's a finable, finable offense. Finable if it doesn't cause an accident. No, I don't think it caused the accident. You caused the accident. How did you I caused the, the accident? accident? This is an inert object. According to my HOA guidelines, that vehicle is supposed to be in his garage. According oh, to Texas state law, it's not supposed to be on the road. And I'm going to tell you, I absolutely agree with you that that's a finable offense if his car is parked. So he's... he's... Don't, you're trying to interrupt me. Okay. That it's a finable offense. The question is, is his car being parked illegally the proximate cause of this accident? That's the question. You're Would that damn be a right fair? It is. I didn't ask you a question unless you went to law school. Huh? No, unless ma'am, you I went didn't. to law school. Am I in the realm? You're closer <laughs> than that, you know, was Paul's graph versus Long Island Railroad. His car may have been parked in the wrong spot. Yeah. If you had somebody that left a baby carriage with a baby on the street, which is certainly against the law and would be a neglectful act on the part of the parent, and if you happen to swerve up to avoid something and hit that baby carriage, you can't say that baby carriage is the cause of the accident. No, the You're the cause isn't. of the accident. No, the owner of the baby carriage is. No, you are. No, they are. <laughs> so how, so how what, am I responsible for their baby carriage? Because your car is moving, sir, and if you're approaching a stop sign, you're not supposed if to be going. If the vehicle wasn't I'm covered, kidding, you could see the reflectors that are on just, it. Yeah. That's what they're there for. Reflectors on yeah, what? Reflectors on the truck that's covered. They're, they have headlights, turn, just, turn signals, everything that's reflective that you could see. There was no reflectors or signals for me to see to know it was there. You would have hit it whether it was covered or not. Horse. <laughs> yep. Very good. May I please see the... That's horse. I wouldn't see... have hit it could I see it. We... Kevin, I want to see what he's got as far as work for the car. <sighs> okay, so this is clearly a project car, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's a piece okay. It don't so run. Get him out of here. Let's go. He's get done. Swear. He's done. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Buddy. Oh, that makes my life so much easier. And later today. You know, you wanted to go. There was no reason why you couldn't. That's why you drive a motorcycle, because you can get into tight places and you can go. But you look like an intelligent young woman. Thank you, Your Honor. Don't take chances. That was a chance. It could have been a lot worse. Bobby Gonzalez claims his neighbor, John Gilbert, hit his classic pickup truck. John is countersuing for car damage and harassment. By the way, both the defendant and his wife have a counterclaim. Their counterclaim is for damages to their car and for harassment. Well, since neither one of them can keep control of themselves, the counterclaim is dismissed. I'm looking at this truck, Mr. Gonzalez. When did you purchase it, sir? And from whom? In October of uh, last year. I purchased it online. Do you have the bill of sale from when you purchased it? I don't it? have the bill of sale, but on, on the paperwork, I have the uh, post on Facebook on how much I paid for it. It was for 8000 OK. I also have an so, appraisal on there as well. I see the appraisal, but I don't have what it's going to take to fix the spot where he damaged the car. He damaged the car in this whole side end. Yes. I mean, he's not going to give you a classic car. Well, I know. That's not going to happen. I know. <laughs> I OK. Know that. That's not going to happen. And certainly, you do understand that I'm not awarding you anything close, even though they're two obnoxious people, anything close to $10,000. You do understand that, Mr. Gonzalez. You're going to have to get this car fixed right now. I'm looking. Where is a invoice for either the work you had done or an estimate to fix that part of the car that he injured? I cannot give that to you because well, then I don't the, have it, the vehicle is a classic. It's very hard to find that type of vehicle. Well, then, then what you're asking me is to guess, sir. Well, I can, I can give you the rates as far as how much... You can't have. give me anything. <laughs> okay. You have to take the car in to somebody who deals with classic cars. This is a 70-year-old truck, and it's certainly beat up. You had it covered for a long time. It shouldn't have been on the street. You do know that. And I assume that since it's not driven, you didn't have it insured. Well, I took it out for Halloween. 
you know, just for the kids? Well, I mean, where do you suggest that I conjure up a figure of $10,000 when you have a car that's a year old that has never been driven that you take out and it's a Halloween ornament? So let me explain this to you. I have to guess at a figure. I would be prepared to award you $2,000 to fix your car because I did see that it had to be damaged as a result of the damage to the defendant's car. If you feel as if you would fare better in your local small claims court where this case came from, because I have dismissed their counterclaim, I will dismiss your case without prejudice and you can take it back to the lower court. Take your choice. I'll go ahead and take it from you. I know I'm not going to get anything from them. Very good. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,000. Counterclaims dismissed. Fix your car. Thanks. Thank you. This court is adjourned. Well, I didn't agree on the price, but with them counting people, I'm not going to get my money back. Ah, it's time to get it repaired. I think you have to be a certain kind of person to not take any accountability when you hit a stationary object. I'll admit, I think that it was probably a 90%, 10% split, 10% plaintiff's fault for parking on the street. I looked up the section code in Texas and did find that if you leave a car longer than five days on the street, you're in violation of a code. But like you tried to explain to the very hot-headed defendant, that's a finable offense. That doesn't mean you can ram into it with your vehicle and not be at fault. I just don't know how you take zero accountability after hitting a stationary object. I don't know either, but that's, I think, a problem with a country that's grown up in the last 50 years, that it's never your fault. Yep. It's always somebody else. It's the state's fault. It's the city's fault. It's somebody else's fault. And it's sad because I know that there was lots of acrimony mm -hmm. between the two of them without it. But they were hotheads. Is this the first time you ever saw me it's send somebody out? A long time. <laughs> yeah, long, long time since I've seen it. Yeah. But when they're clearly not getting the message and they're being hostile, that's not the proper that's way right. to come to court. Right. No. Especially when you're in the wrong. All right. But they have to live near each other. I hope that they get sort of get it together. Just keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Case 2067, Garcia versus Taryn. All parties, please step forward. Amari Garcia is suing fellow motorist April Taryn for damages from a motorcycle accident. This is a case that's about an automobile motorcycle collision. Each one of you claims that the other is responsible for the collision. Ms. Garcia, you were riding the motorcycle? Yes, ma'am. And you were in your car? Yes. Okay. And this happened on what date? March 21st, 2022, around 3 p.m. In what state? California. In the state of California, are you required to have insurance on a motorcycle? Yes, Your Honor. Just liability. Liability if it's paid for in full, correct. Yes, Your Honor. And were you insured on that date? Yes, Your Honor. And you were driving a car? Yes. And was your car insured on March 21st, 2022? Not at the time. So no. the answer is no? No. Did you have a valid driver's license on March 21st, 2022? Yes. From what state? California. What kind of car were you driving? In 2011 Nissan Sentra. Was it a new car for you, or did you have it for a while? It's a new car. I purchased it three weeks prior to the incident. And if you bought it three weeks before, how come you didn't have liability insurance? I was looking for insurance, and plus, uh, at the time, I hadn't received my paperwork. It was still in the other person's name at the used car dealership that I bought it from. Your Honor, I hadn't... you know you're not supposed to be driving a car, Miss Taron, without insurance. Yes, I'm aware of that. Okay. You wanted to say something? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. I have proof that April Taron purchased her vehicle February 8th, 2022. She drove uninsured for 41 days, and it was not from a lot. It was from someone off the street. I have the proof for that. I'd like to see it. Yes. Thank you. For Well, this car that you registered, the selling price was $2,050, according to this. No, it wasn't. And well, I'm going to show you vehicle and transfer law. This is 2011 Sentra. And it was signed, but it's LLC. That's his company. Okay. So it wasn't off the street, but it said the selling price was $2,000. That's and what this says. I don't have my uh, paperwork oh, in my show, car. I want to show this to her. I just want to get some basic facts first, and then I'm going to go to the incident. But that's to... And no, no, the person, the seller... And, you know, I have my paperwork in my car. Yeah. But I, you understand that that's what it's... I understand what, what you said because it's right there. That's... Yes. 
Okay, we have a, a diagram. This happened on March 21st, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. You had no insurance, and you were traveling in the bike lane. No, that is not true. I shared the lane of the car on the right. I would never go into a bike lane. That is disrespectful to the road and riders. Just a second. Are you allowed to share a lane with a car and a motorcycle? That is your right, yes. I know Foothill. Is that where you were? Yes, Your Honor. And at a certain time during the day, Foothill becomes very trafficked. Yes. And the cars sometimes get stopped because there's a light, right? Yes, Your Honor. Go over to there, Ms. Garcia, and show me, please, where you were positioned before you say that you were traveling in the same lane as a car. Your Honor, I was directly behind this car. Okay. Directly behind You were car. directly behind that car. Yes. And that car was stopped. They were slowing to a stop. No, they were stopped because they had to have been stopped because that's why you went around him. They were slowing to a stop. By the time I got around here, they were stopped. I didn't want to veer into here. I was slowing down. I was around 25 miles per hour. This lane at the time was too close. So I shared this lane on this side. Miss Garcia. I got it, Miss Garcia. You want me to appreciate the fact that you wanted to get around the stopped car and you wanted to continue to go straight, correct? You weren't turning. You wanted to go straight. I was going straight, correct. And so you want me to picture in this tiny mind of mine that instead of going into a perfectly clear bike lane, you inched your way at 25 miles an hour in the same lane as a stopped car. Yes. But this you know, diagram... You know, I find that hard to believe, Ms. Garcia. Your I Honor, really find that hard to believe. You may be in the right with regard to this, but I find it hard to believe. The roads you... are very wide. I have the actual police uh, photo document of that. I'd like to see it. Yes, Your Honor. And I'd like to see the police state. report as well. Is there a police it's report? It's attached to this. Fine. Because as you were traveling straight, the defendant was making a left turn. She was making a left turn because the two cars there were stopped, and those were the only two traffic lanes there. Now, I don't know whether she could see whether it's a motorcycle or a bicycle traveling in the bike lane, but what happened was she was making a left turn. According to this, you went into her passenger side. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So where is the motorcycle now? I no longer have it. The towing company, they sold it. What are you driving around in now? 1995 Chevy Beville. Atta girl! <laughs> <laughs>
both lanes paused. Well, that's what you say. Yes. That's what you say. That's not what this says. See, but they both did. And as I was approaching... But I'm just telling you. No, I know. Yeah, that's what I'm I just said. telling you. That's not <laughs> that's, what this is. Exactly. That was what you say. There was nothing that prevented those two cars from going. Exactly. There wasn't a traffic light. There wasn't a stoplight at that spot. Yes. And there was heavy traffic. Yes. So it's your responsibility to make sure if you're making a left turn that you have to yield to all oncoming traffic. And so I the fact that you didn't see her is really not relevant. And as long as you understand that this police report supports Ms. Garcia's claim that you caused this accident by making a left turn when you shouldn't have been making a left turn, that's what this says. And that, you know, at the end of the day, it's an accident. That's why it's not called an on purpose. It's called an accident. Neither one of you anticipated it. As far as I'm concerned, Ms. Garcia, you're entitled to be compensated, but I'm going to suggest this to you. If I'm driving a motorcycle, which I would never do, just for me, I think it's wacky. I think there are enough crazy people driving around that I like about 2,000 pounds of steel around me so that if somebody who is not paying attention and there's an accident, I like to be safe. My first car when I was 17, all my friends were getting these cute little cars, you know, that were convertibles, and my father bought me a 15-year-old blue and white Cadillac sedan. It was so embarrassing oh. to drive around in that car. It was a boat. Oh, come on, everybody else is getting these cute little Corvettes, even if they used ones. And my father, who loved me a lot, said to me, sweetheart, if you get into the accident, I want you to come out unscathed. And this ensures that you got a shot if you get into an accident. And I feel better. So I'm just telling you, if you're going to drive a motorcycle, don't take shortcuts. I know this place on Foothill, and I know what happened here. You know, you wanted to go. There was no reason why you couldn't. That's why you drive a motorcycle, because you can get into tight places. But you look like an intelligent young woman. Thank you, Your Honor. Don't take chances. That was a chance. It could have been a lot worse. What was the damage to your motorcycle? I have pictures. Would you like to see them, Your Honor? I would. I did look it up. Uh, lane splitting motorcycles is legal in California, based on the California Highway Patrol. OK, I know. I see the pictures. So where is the motorcycle now? I no longer have it. The towing company, they sold it. They sold it for $70, they claim, and I got hit with collections afterwards. I have the bill for that, if you'd like to see that. How much did you pay for it? $6,407. Do you have the bill? Yes. I'd like to see it. For my motorcycle, what I paid for, correct? Yes, what you paid for it. What are you driving around in now? A 1995 Chevy Beville. Add a girl! <laughs> Add a girl. <laughs> okay. I'm giving you the value of the motorcycle. Thank you, Your Honor. Which is $6,407. I'm not splitting whose fault this was, actually, but I'm not awarding you any punitive damages for her. She had injuries in her car. You were slightly injured, but both of you seem fine now. I don't think that you were careful enough when you were going straight and around that car that was stopped. But the defendant didn't have insurance, and she was cited by the police for violation of a traffic law. So I'm giving you the cost of your motorcycle. Thank you, Your Honor. Judgment for the plane. This court is adjourned. So I actually ended up, after the car had made impact with me, the bike went that way. I went up into the air. It was really frightening. Um, I hit the ground. I hit on my elbow. I've never experienced that before. I was really scared. I thought, like, oh, this is it. My, my legs are out. And like I said, I was being cautious. And, and thankfully, thankfully, I wasn't. But it ended up in that kind of situation. Definitely more safely as far as better gear and, you know, like she said, don't take a shortcut or anything of that sort. So I looked up lane splitting and in California, it's one of the few states that allows it for motorcyclists. It does say inexperienced riders shouldn't attempt it because like we see, it's very easy to get hit or for someone not to see you if you're splitting between lanes, but it is legal. So she wasn't in the wrong by lane splitting, but I think it was a sticky situation. You're behind a car, someone's turning. What does it say if you're injured? It does say on the Highway Patrol website that you're splitting at your own risk. So any injuries that happen are at your own risk. So they say if you are lane splitting, it's not illegal. Mm -hmm. But if 
you have injuries as a result of an accident, if you're lane splitting, you're responsible for your own injuries. It, it doesn't say it in a legal term that I could really stick but to, a, but it says it's risky. We're acknowledging that it's risky. You have to assume the risk of lane splitting if that's what you choose. Terry Smith is suing her ex-husband, Tony Smith, for three ATVs and a lawnmower. Court cut order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case number 2148, Smith versus Smith. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Smith, this used to be your husband. You haven't been married in a long time, but after your divorce, you sort of remained friendly and you had some business transactions together. What kind of business? I would refer real estate business to him and uh, refer flipping homes and the construction work. Did you take part in that as well? I did. In what year were you divorced? 2015. So this briefly is what I gather from the complaint and the answer and the counterclaim. At some point, according to you, you purchased three ATVs. Those three ATVs were originally supposed to be used in business. We purchased more than three. How those, many did you those purchase? Were the three that were left. It was um, 14 of them that we had. And when you purchase those, you purchase those together as part of a business? No, those were mine. I purchased it. The business, 14. The business was mine. Yes. 14? Yes. You purchased them, you paid for them? Yes, I did. Okay, and you can prove that to me? I can. Okay. Do you agree with the fact your former wife purchased the 14 ATVs? Yes, I agree, but it was underneath an LLC that was formed. I don't care whether it was under an LLC yes. or a little umbrella or a big shoe. She bought the ATVs. Yes. So one of the things that's in question is the ATVs now are in your custody? The remaining ones are in my home, yes. Three? Yes, ma'am. And you want them back? I do. She bought them. Why doesn't she get them back? Because, Your Honor, there is an outstanding invoice for work that I have done for her. What? It's construction work and other odds and ends that was helping her. That's not part of your counterclaim as a set-off, sir. That's not what you say at all. Okay, and also there is a counterclaim. You have a counterclaim. That has to do with your truck. So there really is no reason that you are holding those ATVs. Are they new? No, they are. They were demonstrator models. There's one new one and two demonstrators. Okay, so within five days, you make arrangements to get those, okay? I assume that you have children together? No. no. So... I assume that you are two civilized people. I don't know whether you need a police officer to accompany you to get those. But within five days, make arrangements to pick them up from his house. They're yours. I will. Thank you. Are we then finished with your claim? Now, there's a lawnmower, an electric zero-turn lawnmower. Okay. It's also part of that claim. Okay. I sort of remember that. Is that an old lawnmower? No, it was purchased in May of 2021. And who was it purchased for? He asked me, since he could not get it on credit, if I would buy it for him and the next real estate transaction that I referred him, he said when he got paid, he would pay me the $4,800 back. Okay. And so when I asked for it, he said he had put it in a separate savings account to save it for me. And I said, well, I don't need you to save me. My got money. it. So you have the lawnmower? Yes, ma'am. You picked that up with the ATVs. Thank you. Got it? Thank you. Perfect. Now we have to come to your counterclaim. Your counterclaim is sort of interesting and can be, I think, probably equally swiftly disposed of. After your divorce, you needed a truck. You didn't have any money or credit, according to what I've read. And you purchased a truck in your name for him. And the agreement was that you would make the payments on the truck. Because you couldn't get credit. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. The truck was purchased in what month and year? August of 2020. How much did the truck cost? 58000 somewhere in there. And how much of a down payment did you put down? 500 bucks. Is that right? Yes. That's good. You must have had good credit. I do. Good. And what were the monthly payments, sir? 900 and... I can't remember exactly. It was under 1000 It was 940 dollars I think. And you paid for the truck the month of August of 2020 and all through 2021. Until when? When was your last payment on the truck that you made that you can prove to me that you made? 
I have all the payments. Just tell done. me, when was the last payment you made it, on the truck? It was August of this year. August of 2022. Yes, ma'am. And that's what your bank records will indicate, yes, that you made a payment of 900 and some odd dollars, August of 2022. And in what month did your former wife repossess the truck, which was in her name? It was uh, September 20th. Now, you're going to tell me why you repossessed the truck. Let's talk about the violations. Driving without tags, only two months. When we forget or we're traveling and we don't get registrations for our cars, we don't drive those cars. Because if you're driving with expired tags, that's against the law. Terry Smith claims her ex-husband, Tony Smith, owes for three ATVs and a lawnmower. Tony is countersuing for the value of a truck. Okay, you made a payment of 900 and some odd dollars. Yes, ma'am. August of 2022. And in what month did your former wife repossess the truck, which was in her name? It was uh, September 20th. Okay, now you're going to tell me why you repossessed the truck. Yes, that truck's first payment was due on October 30th of 2020. I made the payment on November no, no, no. 28th. No, no, no. I'm not interested okay. in history. Okay. I'm interested in, he says that he was making payments on the truck. You say he stopped making payments on the truck, which is why you repossessed it. You didn't want your credit to be at risk. It was two of the first payments that I made, and I said, I'm not doing this again like I did on the last truck where I make every payment. But he, no. the insurance, I asked for the insurance to be paid since April of 2020, and I requested this on June the 28th of 2022, and I said, here's the insurance premiums I've paid on the GMC truck since since we've had it, and it was $1,596. His reply was, I'm happy to pay the insurance on my truck, but don't just dump two and a half years on me at a time. I will need to break this up into three increments. This was June. I don't have any money. The insurance and taxes, the taxes this year, this is the first time he's ever paid taxes on the vehicle, and it was one year late. He drove on an expired tag for a total year. The reason... Is that I just a second? Is that correct? I'm sorry? Did you drive on an expired tag no, for a year? No, it was only a few months late. But so you drove... It wasn't an entire year. How many months? Two months. Well, that's too long. I agree. And was your agreement that you would maintain the insurance for the truck as well? That was something that we discussed, and because of the... What the, re the real reason she actually agreed to purchase the truck, we had a previous truck that was also I was driving, and because of the LLC that the truck was under, it was a very high commercial insurance rate. So she felt that, that it would benefit her to get another truck and come out from under the commercial rate that she was paying for insurance. And she was going to put it in a group insurance policy. Where is the truck? Where is the truck? You've had possession of the truck. That's correct. So you get all the benefit of the truck, and she gets all the detriment. I'm just referring to, the, to what No, no, I'm just... Uh, what I'm not getting from you, sir, is any sense of... The whole idea was, this is going to be my truck. As soon as I finish making all the payments on the truck, the truck is going to be mine. Mm -hmm. Right? That's correct. And if you didn't make payments on the truck, absolutely... She has a right to repossess it if that was your agreement. And you acknowledge that that's your agreement, right? That is the agreement, but I have made every payment and I oh, have paid all the taxes. Well, the word paid all the taxes eventually. Didn't pay them when due. That happened once. Paid the, didn't pay them when due. Pay them eventually. What about the insurance? The insurance, I agreed to catch up and pay her back for once she told me what it was. Okay. I never received a, any information about the insurance amount until she sent it all in one... Okay, she sent it to you in one email. Lump. That was in June, and you said I couldn't pay it, and she repossessed the car in September. Between June and September, did you make any insurance payment? No, I did not. Why? It was a lot of things going on at that time that there was money owed to me as well from her. So it was a lot of discussion going back and forth about that. Well, but one thing is clean 
you know about the insurance, and if there's money that she owes you from construction or real estate or whatever it is, you have to put that in compartments. Where is the truck now? I took the truck back and it is sold. Did you ever tell him? He wouldn't talk to me. He hasn't talked to me since May. So you had the truck for approximately two years? Yes, ma'am. And how much in total did you pay for the truck? The exact amount added up was $18,736. So you paid approximately $9,000 a year, right? Correct. Your Honor, we had an agreement of $1,200 a month on the truck to cover the insurance and taxes up front before it was purchased. That's not true. Well, if you paid approximately $9,000, Mr. Smith, and you used it for business, correct? That's what you used the truck for. So you paid approximately $750 a month if you paid $9,000 each year for the two years, 1870. You say the payments were $900 a month. That means that there was a shortfall. Can I, can I bring us... It, it was more than two years. It was August of 2020 until... Uh, September. August of this year. Well, that's two years. There's also a down payment... Five hundred dollars. I'm not. Okay. So that's seven hundred and fifty dollars, sir. I always have a problem with people who are no longer married and no longer happy with each other, where one party has the obligation and has all the liability on a vehicle, including their credit and their insurance, when the other person is being either irresponsible or blinking at certain. Violations. Let's talk about the violations. Driving without tags, only two months. When we forget or we're traveling and we don't get registrations for our cars, we don't drive those cars. Because if you're driving with expired tags, that's against the law. I would like to point out, if I may, that the bill for that obviously went to her address. It was not given to me. You... Now, that's not my... I, I... I understand that I need to be aware of it, but I, didn't, I never received that bill. I gave it to him the very just, month it came just in. Just a second. That's not true. Just a second. You're a big boy. You know when your car has to be registered, you have a little yellow tag on the back like everybody else. And insurance, you know, you're supposed to pay insurance. That was your agreement. You were supposed to pay insurance. And you didn't pay insurance. She's going to show me how much was left on the loan and how much she sold the truck for. If she sold the truck for more than was left on the loan, the difference between, if looking at me, the yes. difference between that belongs to you. Terry Smith is accusing ex-husband Tony Smith of wrongfully keeping three ATVs and a lawnmower. Tony claims Terry owes him for the cost of a truck. Okay, well, are you working now, sir? Yes, ma'am. Great. She sold the truck. How much did you sell it for? 48000 And how much was left on the loan? Forty-eight. It was even. Oh, well, show me. It was even. Oh. I'd like to see that. Ooh. So $48,000 was... He paid $18,000. Hang on one second, I got it. Mm -hmm. Can I submit this to you? you what is that? Or this, my bank name is showing the payment. No, you me. told me I okay. accepted it. Okay. She doesn't dispute it, and I accept it. I do have a copy of the title here somewhere. What I'm looking for, Mr. Smith, just so that you know, what I'm having to look for for me, she's going to show me how much was left on the loan and how much she sold the truck yeah. for. If she sold the truck for more than was left on the loan, the difference between... you looking at me? The yes. difference between that belongs to you. Oh, I see. Because you paid it, right? I see. Yes, ma'am. Got it? That yep. fair? Did she tell you that she sold the truck? No, ma'am. He, he went and bought a truck two days later, so he was able to buy a truck. OK. I mean, Would you find those papers for me? Are you I'm looking, looking for those sorry, papers for me? I Mr. Can't. Smith, did you buy another truck? Yes, ma'am. Good. Did you put a down payment on it? Yes, ma'am. And you own it now? Yes, ma'am. And you're driving it now? That's correct. What would you do with a second truck? Well, I was forced to buy one because it... I, well, I, I, no understand you were, I understand you were forced to buy one, sir. But if you had the truck and you weren't going to use two trucks, 
you would sell this truck for whatever amount you sold it for, and if there was any overage, you'd get to... I offered to purchase the truck from her. In fact, she understood that I was planning to purchase the truck from don't, her. Don't tell me what she understood. Right now, you don't need a truck, and I'm going to find out whether or not she has to give you any money as a result of what she sold this, the truck this for. This bill of sale does not have the amount on it. I didn't realize that. I'll have to get that from... Well, from this is the I time to it. get it. I'm sorry. I did not realize it didn't have it on there. Okay. Oh, you sold it to a company? I did. Oh, okay. Not to a private party? No. Is that the same company that you purchased it from? Uh, no. I purchased it from a different dealership. Okay. Do you have the exact amount that the loan, the extant loan was? The original loan was 60. No, no. I'm sorry. The exit loan? Yeah, the was, exit. It was between um, 48 and 49,000, give or take. Yeah. Hang on, hang and on, the hang truck on, hang was, on. And hang the on. truck I have it. was purchased for 56, so that amounts for his payments plus interest. I have okay. it. That's the difference of what they gave me. I originally put the down payment on that truck as well. He did not. That doesn't matter. Yeah, that was the difference they gave me in the sale. Okay, so this That's is the, the difference, difference yes. between what was on the loan... Exactly. ...between what was on the loan... Exactly. ...and this. Okay, exactly. so the excess, sir, was $2,225. She put in the deposit for the truck when it was originally purchased, the $500? She did not. Yes, Who did? I did. I did, and I have a copy. I have that in this record right here. Show me. We added tires. We added all kinds of extra stuff and everything to it. I, I don't I paid care. for that. I don't well. care. I don't care. Yeah. This is actually... Just show me... It's on my phone. Can I show it? Can I... From 2020? Yes. What had happened, the amount actually came off of this statement copy. Let me see. Can I submit this to you where I made the two payments on the truck? When he first started, I made the very second fine. payment and the fourth yeah. payment on that truck because he wouldn't make it. I also notified him on June the 20th that he had 30 days to get the truck in his name, and I never heard anything. No. You can't notify him no. within 30 days to get it in his name. That's not the agreement. Let me see. Yeah. There's this. It's in yellow. Yep. Purchased authorized August 22nd, and this is 2020. 20. For five hundred dollars, okay. So the difference of the five hundred dollars that came out of your account brings the total excess that she received one thousand seven hundred and twenty-five dollars. She's coming to pick up her lawnmower within five days and her three ATVs. At the same time, she's going to give you one thousand seven hundred and twenty-five dollars, which is the difference between what was owed on the truck and the profit that was made that she didn't pay for. We're finished here. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I think it was fair. Well, it was a little less than I thought I was going to get back from it, but and there's a lot more to the story that obviously I couldn't get in. Well, I, I mean, I had the truth, so. She understands why that is because there's an outstanding invoice from me for work that I've done that she's refusing to pay for. I have supported him since since 2003. Construction work. I did a lot of. Uh, planning and helping her with her current home that she's living in. It is just one thing after another, and I could never owe him one dime. I mean, everything was fine between us. Has trauma bonded me and manipulated me and gaslit me for all these years and kept me around just in case other relationships didn't work out. Until she found out I was seeing someone else. No, no, no. I had been asking for everything of mine that, that he kept for and held hostage. Um, for a long time before that, but he's probably had many more before that. I just didn't know about him. But I'm happy. I, I was thinking he was making me think that we were reconciling while he was using me. I don't see us talking anymore. The bank is finally closed, and the bad bargain has just been a nightmare. It's been hundreds of bad bargains. No more business ventures. You see, it's always a mistake, unless you're married. Yep to co-sign a loan for anybody, yeah. a boyfriend, <laughs> a somebody. An ex-husband. An ex, <laughs> an especially an <laughs> ex-husband. Yeah, because I think what you said was true. There's always one person that gets no benefit and gets slighted and has their name on the line for their credit for future purchases that they want to make, and the guy who gets to drive the truck. And the guy who gets <laughs> to drive the truck. Of course, he says that the reason she got all hot and bothered is because he has a girlfriend now.
I would have felt a little more sympathy towards him had he not gone out two weeks later and bought her. <laughs> Mark Michelonis is suing his former roommate, Christopher Robertson, for rent, a security deposit, and stolen property. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2066, Michelonius versus Robertson. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Robertson, how long had you been living in your apartment prior to renting a room to the plaintiff? I believe it was about three years. You had been living there by yourself? No, I had roommates previously. When did the plaintiff move in? I believe that it was January 1st of 2017. 2017? It may have been 2018. It was the first, I forget. It was 2018. That's correct. How long did he live there with you? Uh, he lived there with me until September of 2021. So far, that correct, sir? Yes, ma'am. So now let me understand this lawsuit. Mr. Robertson lived in his apartment for three years. You answered an ad for a room. You lived with him in his home as a tenant from January 2018 until September 2021. Correct. At that time, there was a dispute. Probably we'll get into that for, in a moment. There was a dispute. During part of that time, Mr. Michelonis, you did not pay rent. Is that correct? During COVID? That's correct. For what period of time did you not pay rent? Um, well, there was... I had, uh, Give me how many months did you not, did not pay rent? There was... You don't have to uh, think out loud. How many months between January of 2018 and September 2021 did you not pay rent? Give me a number. That's a number. Four months. Some some months I paid partial rent. So, but there were four months that I did not pay any rent. Four months, no rent. And how many months did you pay partial rent? Uh, I believe that would have been four or three. So for seven months you did not pay your rent. Paying partial rent is not rent. Now, my question to you, Mr. Robertson, is: This is an apartment that you rent. Yes. Or rented. Mm -hmm. From. January 2018 until September 2021, was your rent current? My portion of the rent was current. What do you mean your portion? My portion that I was responsible for. No, it's your apartment. You're responsible for the whole thing, Mr. Robertson. Yes. Okay, you're responsible for the whole rent. And if what you chose to do was to say to your landlord, listen, I have a roommate, I'm just paying my portion of the rent, my roommate isn't paying his, right. then your rent wasn't paid. Yes. And I assume that your rent wasn't paid for the same period of time that he didn't pay you his portion of the rent. Yes. Was it for any period of time greater than that? Greater than the four months or the seven months that he didn't pay rent? I went through my bank statements um, and they went back until, um, I believe, July of 2020. And that's as far back as, as my bank app lets me go. Okay. There were more months than that that I received partial or no rent payments for... From him? From him. I'm asking you about your landlord. If you didn't pay your landlord, are you telling me your landlord didn't file an eviction against you? There were several months that he did um, pay his full rent, and so that would have meant that the entire rent for that period... Well, I know, but if the rent was not paid, did your, land let me, did your landlord ever serve you an eviction notice? No, there was an eviction moratorium in Alameda County at that point for unpaid rents due to COVID. Gotcha. So that would it be a fair statement that you both took advantage of that. He took advantage of it, and so did you. I... Um, I, I wouldn't say that it was uh, me trying to take advantage. I would just say it was my inability to cover the entire rent. Your portion as well as his. My portion was always covered. Your portion was covered? Yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Michelonis, when did you move from month and year? It was uh, September of 2021. And when did you leave there? I believe it was the third or fourth week of August of 2021. So you both left the place at about the same time? Um, I left involuntarily, but yes. Well, you left involuntarily, because that's what this case is about. Okay, so now I have the structure of it. Do you understand the structure of it? I understand. You understand the structure of it? I just want to make sure that people out there watching understand the structure of it. So you were the renter, and you had an argument. It resulted in a protective order for somehow some genius put him out of his own apartment because of these protective... You weren't in the hospital for anything, were you, as a result of an assault? No. 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 You have no medical records there of being treated for any injury. It was a as harassment. A, just, just a minute. Do you know my husband harasses me every day? <laughs> every day. I couldn't think of evicting him. I mean, you do other things. So the answer is, 
you were never treated for any illness. You were never treated for anxiety at a hospital as a result of this harassment. As a result of your allegations, let us say of harassment, Mr. Robertson was ejected from his own home, from which you had not been paying rent. Your portion that you were supposed to pay contractually with him for months because of COVID. Am I getting this story right so far? I'm not finished yet, but so far, is there anything that I said was wrong? Um, I think that's pretty, pretty close. I mean, okay, so that's pretty close. And now what you are seeking here is, should I say basically, and I hate that word, basically, but it's appropriate in this case. So all of those haters out there, they actually use basically, I don't care. <laughs> it's appropriate here. And I put in the protective order that they were living with me, but they were moving. No, 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 no. They were living with you. You were living with them. Well, yeah, we were living together. No. You were living with the defendant. He wasn't living with you. Mark Michelonis claims his former roommate, Christopher Robertson, owes for rent, a security deposit, and stolen property. Christopher is countersuing, claiming Mark owes him for rent. Now, what you're claiming in your lawsuit is that after a review of the copy of the underlying lease, you found that you were paying the vast majority of the rent. Correct. And so you want a return of that money. That's correct. Under what theory in the law? Well, basically that he, he defrauded No, no, you, now you can't use a basically. Okay. okay. I want to know what theory is there in the law that says if I own a building and I lease to someone the whole building for $10,000 and then I find somebody who is prepared to pay me and I have the first two floors of the building, third floor is vacant, I find somebody who's willing to pay me $9,000 a month just for the top floor. That makes me a good business person. But unless there is something that prohibits him from doing that... There is, Your Honor. Show me. There's a clause in the lease. No, just show me. Okay. I'm a lawyer. I can so, read a so lease. So the sub-lease the sub that I agreed to with him incorporates the entirety of this master Just a second. Lease. I'd just like to see it, okay. please, sir. I'd just like to see it. I assume you've highlighted what you want me to read. Correct. Okay. So what you're pointing to is that the landlord, his landlord, was not advised that you were subletting. No. Well, that's why signed by every tenant. So that was one of the things, because if you look at the second lease, the one that was altered by Christopher to remove those areas so I wouldn't be aware, I wouldn't be able to enforce them. Uh, was because he moved his, his boyfriend in without getting my consent. And, and so it says in there that he's, he needs written consent. I understand that that doesn't apply to me, but he thought it did. And so he used whiteout on the other lease that I, I gave to you to obfuscate those terms. I don't know how to put this to you, sir, other than to say, let me backtrack, what kind of work do you do? I'm a web developer. You work for yourself or for a company? I do. I'm an independent contractor. How long have you been doing that? Two years. Prior to that, what were you doing? I was a system administrator. For whom? Uh, for a small company in San Francisco. How long did you work for them? Uh, six years. So for two years, you were an independent web developer, and you're still an independent web developer. Correct. Right. And that's how you support yourself. Right. So you work out of your home. Right. And you've been working out of your home, you said, the last two years, since 2020. This is 2022 or 19. Right. What do you mean, right? So it was, it was uh, yeah, it would have been... When you 20... moved in 2018, I... were you an independent was... contractor? No, I was going to school. You were going to school? Right. I, for what? When I went to, Just I a was... second, for what? For uh, web, web technologies. It was a program for web, uh, web development technology. Did you go in person? Yes. It was an intensive. How, for how long? Uh, it was uh, three months. It was eight hours a day. Okay, so you went to school for three months. Right. During what period of time? Uh, January uh, 2018 to uh, Mar end of March 2018. Okay. And at that time, you were living with the plaintiff. Correct. 
Okay, so you needed a room for that three-month period. And after that time, you supported yourself by being your own boss, by developing websites It for took people. me a while to find a job, but yes. What do you mean it took your time to find a job? The interview process to get work. I was interviewing. It was, a very, it was very hard to break into that industry. And so what did you do? So I started taking on ind like, uh, independent work. So you never actually got a job outside of the independent work that you That's did? That's correct. So you support yourself by doing web development out of your home. Yes. So you used the home that you were living in, that room that you were renting, mm -hmm. for not only your personal business, but you operated a place of business out of your residence. Okay. What do you mean, okay? Yes. <laughs> yes. I just want you to see how ridiculous you are. You want $10,000 because you, you overpaid what you consider your fair share of the rent. That's not going to happen. You come here, you didn't pay rent for at least seven months, because of COVID, you were working according to you. You were a web developer, still are, it's 2022, because you have no other job other than being a web developer. You stopped paying rent. You moved out after he did, correct? Well, did you pay? I'd like to in the, correct In something. the month that you lived there, when you had put him out of his house, because you were, because- I, They were be moving out. I did not put him out of the house. I thought that was a protective order. It was, but they were, they were and I put in the protective order that, that they, they, they were living with me, but they were moving, and so... No, 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 no. They were living with you. You were living with them. Well, yeah, we were living together. No. <laughs> you were living with the defendant. He wasn't living with you. You were renting a place, although you weren't paying rent from him, and the underlying landlord wasn't getting his money, all of his money, because he wasn't getting your money. And what's coming to me is that somebody got stiffed with rent, and that would be the landlord who rented you your place where you were living because you didn't pay him the whole thing, you didn't pay him the whole thing, and now you want me, you're asking me, to award you $10,000 for overpayment of rent. Your Honor, could I clarify something? The, the times when I, when I didn't pay rent, I was not working, my, it was during COVID, so the first couple months of the COVID lockdown, I lost all of my contracts, so I didn't have any money, and so I was, Using the COVID, there was a COVID process where you could, you know, basically say that, you know. There's no basically in there. Only I okay. used it once. I was just, I did not have the money to pay rent. I was not just making money and not paying rent. I would not do that. I was broke. All of my contracts dried up because nobody had any money. I was working for small So what are you companies. suing him for now? The government was very good to you. This is a very interesting America. It's a rent forgiveness, a rent moratorium. That doesn't mean the state where you live. What state do you live in? California. California. That doesn't mean the owner of this premises was given some sort of a break that they didn't have to pay for utilities, taxes, mortgage on the building, because it's, it's used as a business. As far as I know, there wasn't a moratorium on that, but there was a moratorium on two seemingly able-bodied people to say to the landlord, I can't pay my rent. <laughs> to add insult to injury, you think that I'm going to give you $10,000 because he charged you more than whatever the third or 40% of your occupancy of the apartment and he shouldn't have? That's not going to happen, sir. So forget it. I've been here a long time. If a landlord is owed $5,000, yes. he doesn't say, well, Tenant owes me $5,000, but his apartment was clean. I'm going to give him back his $2,000 security deposit. That doesn't happen. Mark Michelonis has accused his former roommate, Christopher Robertson, of overcharging for rent and keeping his property. Christopher is countersuing Mark for unpaid rent. Now, you gave him a security deposit. That is part of your lawsuit. Correct. So I want you to forget the overpayment of rent because it is ridiculous. Okay. So now let's go to the security deposit part of your complaint. Did he give you a security deposit? He did, Your Honor. Now, he didn't pay rent because of this moratorium yes. on rent. Did you get your security deposit back from the landlord? I did. How much? I believe I got the total amount for the, the entire apartment, which was approximately $2,000. And how much did Mr. Michelonis give you as a security deposit? He gave me 1250 for the security deposit plus a 300 deposit pet deposit. 
Sometimes the pet deposit is refundable. Did you get the pet deposit back? Uh, I don't recall specifically if I got that back from the landlord. But uh, you did get back your entire security deposit, which included his 1250 Yes. Okay. That's correct. Let's hold that in abeyance for a moment, because now I'm going to go to your counterclaim. Sure. I think that's all I have to deal with. Oh, and property taken without permission. Did you get that property back? There was some... I did not. What property was it? There was um, a stone Buddha carving. There was some, some dishes, some glasses. Oh, give me a break. Do you have a stone Buddha carving? I have the stone Buddha carving. I have a small statuette, a, a rooster that is his, and a small metal Great. Would, would you inside. pack those up? Yes. Do you live close to each other? I, I haven't been able to because of our mutual um, restraining okay. orders. Fine. Do you know where your local precinct is? Yes. Where is it located? Uh, I believe that the closest one would be downtown for me, downtown Oakland. Okay. You'll find out before you leave today in five days, drop it off at the local precinct. Absolutely. Let him know when, and he could go pick up his Buddha. Yes, I, I don't want bad in my home. Terrific. Now, money owed for COVID debt is your counterclaim. Yes. Which is what? Uh, how, it how is much, a total what? of fifty-five, thirty-five, I believe. For what? Um, that is the um, unpaid rent. Uh, but you didn't pay his rent, you just told me. Right, and so this is the outstanding balance of the rent that he never paid that I'm responsible for as the master tenant. Oh, no, you just told me that you got your security deposit back. If you got your security deposit back, sir, that means that the landlord is finished with you. Um, according to the law... Not I mean, according to the law. If you got your security deposit back, the entire security deposit, the landlord has written it off because otherwise he would have taken your security deposit if you owed him or her money. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's very simple. I understand it's what you're saying. It's very simple. I, I wish I could explain I, that to them in, in your... Well... <laughs> in your <laughs> manner. <laughs> I, well, I want to tell you something. I've been here a long time. If a landlord is owed $5,000... Yes. He doesn't say, well... Tenant owes me $5,000, but his apartment was clean. I'm going to give him back his $2,000 security deposit. That doesn't happen. So Only be... in the land of Oz does that happen. <laughs> they might live there. Not in... No, they might live there, but I don't live there. <laughs> okay. You owe him $1,250 for security deposit. This case is over. Your counterclaim's dismissed. with um, Wait, court is adjourned. Thank you very much. I would just like to bring... Goodbye. Okay. Well, I was a little upset. He's being... A drama queen. The clause in the, the lease was to prevent people from over, like, basically taking advantage of the fact that they've been living in a place for a long time and gouging rent for, for new, new tenants. He said I was price gouging him because it was enough to pay more rent than he might have if he had done some more research. They were trying to make it equal. And mo every place that I've lived in, there was always an equitable share of the rent. Like, no one was ever gouging anybody. So I just, I felt that, um, I was un unjustly charged. Well, I can't say it wasn't very satisfying to hear the judge call his claims ridiculous to his face. Basically, he was leaving the front door open, making it so my, my dog could escape easily. He was filling the house up with s smoke. We both burned sage. He was basically trying to get me riled up. He wanted me to, to move. While I am disappointed that I won't be able to recover some of his COVID debt. Basically, the moment that he was, you know, it was inconvenient for me to be there, he tried to make my life a miser miserable. I'm glad that I will never have to see him again, and this is done. I'm not living with roommates ever again. I've got my dog, and we're cool. He was a nightmare, and I never have to see him again. You know, far be it from me to second guess another judge, but it would seem to me sort of outrageous unless there was some sort of a physical altercation. Why anyone, because he clearly was excluded from his house, he left mm -hmm. first and he said, you know, involuntarily. Would anybody exclude... The original the, tenant. The original when I read tenant. the papers, I thought the same thing. I thought that was outrageous, that they would throw out the primary leaseholder on a lease in favor of his subtenant, which may or may not have been legal to begin with. with. You know, I can understand it if there was something more serious. Mm -hmm. But harassment? I just don't understand it. But I didn't mine understand. is not to wonder why. <laughs> mine is but to do what I do. And I don't think that when you come into a court where you have at least participated marginally in a giveaway, to then come in and say, you know what, there's a technical thing. He wasn't supposed to charge me this much rent because I didn't occupy this much of the apartment, whatever. Ridiculous when you didn't pay rent exactly for seven months anyway. Claims her son and his wife, Jacoby and Kelly Kelm, owe for the cost of a van and lost property. All right. Have a seat, please. 
Hello, Judge. Case 2127, Kim versus Kim. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Kelm, this is your son and your wife. Yes. What's your first name? Jacoby. What do they call you? Jake. How old are you, Jake? 31. How long have you been married? Seven years. Prior to getting married, were you married to someone else? Yes. For how long? Five years. Did you ever live with your mother? No. When was the last time you lived with your mother? Uh, I was 17, I believe. OK, so you had a reasonable relationship with your mother? Yes. Until when? Until May of the all, well, I'd say September of this year. September of 2022? Correct. This is about a car. Is your claim that you sold your son a car and he didn't pay you? His defense is that it was a gift. There was never a discussion about payment. When you turned over the car to your son, according to what I've read, you signed over the documents that allowed him to register the car in his own name, which he did. So he registered the car in his own name. Is the car still driving now? No, it is not. Where is it? Uh, it, it got scrapped. When? Uh, October 3rd, 2022, which I have the receipt for that as well. When did your mother turn the car over to you? May 31st. What kind of car was it? Uh, 2006 Chrysler Town & Country. What happened to it? Transmission went out on it, and uh, it had some electrical issues. It kept draining the battery. Had you spent anything to have those issues addressed? Not on the transmission. Uh, I did replace the battery three times. Did you buy a new car? Yes. How much? 700. What kind of car? Uh, 2003 Nissan Altima. Why don't you tell me the circumstances, Jake, of the transfer of the car from your mother to you? Tell me the date that that happened. I got the title on the 30th of, of May. May. On the 31st, I was able to transfer it. Tell me about the conversation with your mother when she signed over the title to you. She uh, says you were supposed to pay her some $800 for the car. No, Your Honor. I want you to tell me what the conversation was with your mother when she gave you the title. You came oh. to her, you didn't have a car. Right. You didn't have a car, you needed a car. And? She said, you know, the van's sitting over at the other property. It's just been sitting there for the last year. You can go over and if it starts, you can use it. And it, it did. She said, however, you cannot take the van until the, the, tra the title's transferred. And at which point she gave me the title and the lien card for it. I went to the DMV, I transferred it, came back, got the van, and I was on my way. About a month, month and a half later, she was uh, saying that if you give me $500, um, I'll put it in the safe for you, and then I'll just give it to you when you need it. You have any communication with your mother about the car? Not anymore. I mean, communication in writing. Oh, yes, I, I do. But nothing about payments. I mean, you know, there was a few texts here and there saying, I want my money, or I'll take the van back. I'd like to see that. OK. I, yeah, I, got I might have one more in here. There's this one as well. Jake, on September 3rd, Jake, you said, not sure what's going on with you, but this is getting ridiculous. I'll pay you when I have the money. Right. That's what you said. Yep. I'm not I saying I don't owe her anything. I'm just saying I, I was going to give her something just to show. No, no, no. So on September 3rd, you got the car at the end of May, so June, July, and August you had the car, and you said, I'm not sure what's going on with you. Maybe, Mom, you're having issues that I don't know about, but this is getting ridiculous. I'll pay you when I have the money. That's an acknowledgement that you owe your mother the money. Correct. Okay. And how much did you agree to sell him the car for? The car was $800. Okay. Tell me about discussing with him the cost of the car and what you were going to sell it to him for. We were at my friend's house, and we were playing marbles and having a few beers, like we always do. We get together a lot. And he didn't have a vehicle, so we discussed he could use mine. And at that time, he said, well, he'd rather buy it. And then I said, OK, I will sell the van, which I was talking to my daughter about. She wanted to buy it also. And I told them both it was $800. And you could shake your head, no, that's true. Yeah, never. But it was $800, and he said, OK, could he get it right away? And I said, well, first of all, I can't let you drive it because you're not insured. And then we talked about he was going to buy it, and he would take it. I said, you got to transfer the title first. So he did all that. OK, well, that's responsible of both of you. Yeah, there is no way we could leave it, go with no insurance. 
So then they took the van, and I told them first, I need to clean it out, because I have a bunch of stuff in there. They said they would clean it out, but they needed a vehicle right away, and I said, okay. Um, I when never... was the first time you asked him for money? $800 is a substantial amount of money. He would get a paycheck, and he would go and go to the casino or go to the racetrack or whatever, and I said, well, what about paying me some money? And later today... You sound like a really bright young man. I appreciate that, Your Honor. You really should find something important to do. I have changed, <laughs> I have changed the sectors since then, Your Honor. Holly Kelm claims her son and his wife, Jacoby and Kelly Kelm, owe for the cost of a van and lost property. Okay, when was the first time you asked him for money? In the summer sometime. I mean, we, we'd get together at my friend's house, and it was probably, probably a month later I asked him, are you going to pay something on the van? I couldn't even say an exact date because, like I said, we got together, we played cards, and we would have a few beers with my friends over at her place, and then we'd discuss the van a little bit, discuss the money. Just for my own curiosity, you have seemed to have, up until this point, a very fine relationship with your son and his wife. Is there something that interfered with that? I mean, $800 is a substantial amount of money, but odd to there bring is, it to a there lawsuit. There's really nothing that interfered with our relationship except for him not paying me some money. And in between this time, and you you both don't, know this. Don't, don't look at me. I, there's don't one me. text in here, do you have any money I could borrow? And while well, I didn't have any money, I think I probably had 20, and I would give it to him. Because being a mom, I don't want to see him hurting, but I told him, you still have to pay me for my car. Okay. And he acknowledges that he would pay you for the car when I have it. But he would get, his, well, he get, would get a paycheck, and he would go and go to the casino or go to the racetrack or whatever. And I said, well, what about paying me some money. I said, can you at least give me $25 so I can pay for my medicine? I don't have it. Okay. Okay. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $800. We're finished. This court is adjourned. Well, I'm glad. At least I'll get my money back for the, my van. Uh, there's a lot of things that my mom did say that were very untrue. I love him. I will always love him. He's my baby. You just don't sue family over something so stupid. You know, I'm really happy that I finally learned how to text. Yeah, and how useful and it, text messages can be. Because, I, you know, I was late to the game with all <laughs> this electronic stuff. Anyway, these text messages have become so vital to adjudicating cases because younger people memorialize everything, including what they have for breakfast <laughs> and lunch and what, how they're feeling and what they're doing in text messages. But for the text message that he gave me, which said, I'll, <laughs> I owe you the money, I'll pay you when I have it. I think people, especially younger generation, think it's, it's a flippant, oh, I'm going to send this text really quick, like or I'm going to... somebody on exactly, the phone. Exactly, like it's, like it's a conversation, but they don't realize the legal implications of, of sending a text from your phone number, admitting a debt, even if that's not what you intended at the time you sent the text, now there's this altercation and now, you bring it to court. Right, and it's memorialized in a writing yeah. coming from your phone. Got to be careful with what you text. Yeah. Page 2132, Eagle versus Urrich. All parties, please step forward. Tobias Eagle is suing his former friend, Joshua Ulrich, for cryptocurrency profits and equipment. Mr. Eagle, you and Mr. Ulrich were friends. You were traveling together for business. What kind of business were you in other than this cryptocurrency? First off, we weren't uh, friends initially. We were first business um, partners, and we worked together underneath my mentor. Through Your his boss? Company, Symbio. Yes. Okay. And what kind of business? It was uh, teaching uh, workforce development for, I guess you could say, um, people who needed skills so they can be prepared for engineering jobs. Okay. You worked at the same company? Yes. Okay. Is and when I did know. you decide to go into this business together? Around January to February 2021. This has to do with cryptocurrency? Yes. Okay. This 
cryptocurrency business that you went into together? Did you form a company or an LLC? Yeah, I already had a company established. I was doing it more as uh, a recreation, but... So the was... answer is you and the defendant, when you wanted to go together into this business, did not form a separate company? No. So individually, it is your claim that you spent some $20,000 on equipment for this new company. Yes. And you were supposed to share whatever profits there were in this new company. And quite frankly, I know nothing about cryptocurrency. I am of the Charlie Munger school of mm -hmm. cryptocurrency. I think it's all about the emperor's new clothes. And unless I can feel it, touch it, taste it, smell it, or bite on it, it doesn't exist. So I want you to know that's where I'm starting. Yes. Okay? So you're going to explain to me what the business was that you were doing with him that involved buying $20,000 worth of equipment, mm -hmm. which you now say is in his possession that you want back. Yes. Cryptocurrency. Okay. He mentioned that he knew how to um, mine cryptocurrency. Okay. That's how we now that's, it. I understand yeah. that those are the words that you use. Where is the mine? May I explain cryptocurrency to you a little more too, Your Honor? Oh, I'd love to hear you. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> Mining is just a term for generating profits from cryptocurrency. There is no physical mine, as you may already be aware. Um, it's not like mining gold. Yes. yes. It's not like anything. It's like the emperor's new clothes. Yes, ma'am. But essentially, That's cryptocurrency... That's why it collapsed. Yes. Uh, <laughs> cryptocurrency mining is just... You know way... that it collapsed. Oh, yes. It collapsed. Everybody back. knows that it collapsed. Yes, ma'am. Charlie Munger predicted that a long time ago. Yes, ma'am. But uh, essentially... Do you know that? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> so what you were involved in is a shill game of Emperor's New Clothes, which would have involved all of your investors. Mm -hmm. Who was it that created cryptocurrency? The Vinkel Boss? I don't Boss know who created cryptocurrency. Brothers? I don't know. Not sure. In any event, somebody had a vivid imagination. Yes, ma'am. But all crypto is, is we essentially use our computer resources, specifically a piece called a graphics card that is really good at solving equations. We essentially solve equations for money. That's really all mining is. And you so we solve equations revenue. for money? Yes, ma'am. What equations? I don't know the specific equations. Essentially, the equations are so complex that when you solve them, you're rewarded for your time and the effort that your computer put into it, and that's where the revenue or mining comes from. Oh we essentially validate transactions the same way you might want to make sure that a transaction on your bank statement is legitimate. And so we were paid for validating these transactions. You sound like a really bright young man. I appreciate that, Your Honor. You really should find something important to do. I have changed, <laughs> I have changed uh, sectors since then, Your Honor. You have equipment that he paid for? No, Your Honor. I would actually like to just get in. Just a second. I'm yes, just asking a question. I thought maybe we could resolve this. Show me what equipment you purchased, sir, the receipts for it, and tell me where it is. And so we're not here specifically for the GPUs that he claimed. The what? Uh, GPUs, graphics, uh, graphic cards. Graphics just a cards. second. Don't say anything to me, sir. You have a counterclaim for equipment. I have it for equipment and cryptocurrency assets. Too. I'm not bothering with that. Okay, no worries, Your Honor. Yeah, no worries. Tobias Eagle claims his former friend, Joshua Ulrich, owes for cryptocurrency profits and equipment. I contributed $20,000 in equipment, and by the yes. first quarter of 2021, I am suing the defendant, Joshua Ehrlich, for cryptocurrency profits and return or value of equipment. Yes. I'm not concerned about cryptocurrency profits, because I think cryptocurrency is a whole lot of who shot John. Mm -hmm. And the only ones that probably got skunked are any investors that you put into cryptocurrency. Well, it still has value, so... Well, you know something? You tell that to all the people who lost billions in the last two weeks. Would you mind just showing me the equipment that you purchased and receipts for it? I didn't yes. ask you for anything. Yes, Your Honor. Equipment that you purchased. Okie dokie. And so for this equipment, it was purchased through an auctioning site. And so they only have a year delay, and then um, that was the only information I was able to receive from them. That's not helpful to me, sir. That's not helpful to me at all. I can't... What am I supposed to do with this? That's just showing that I have proof that I purchased the equipment. It doesn't show me how much 
it wasn't how much I bought it for, it was because I plan on rebuying the equipment. And so that's just proof that I bought the equipment and that he has it. That a workstation, a Hewlett Packard server. Yes. And I have uh, a price one break. small pallet of miscellaneous battery backups. Yes. And there were specifically 12 and of those. And two Dell towers. Yes. Everything here are things that you yes. want back from him. Yes. You have nothing in your house of these things. Of those things? No. Those are in his barn right now. Okay. Do you have these things? No, Your Honor. Did you ever have this in your possession? Yes, at one point I did have it in my possession. When? I had it in my possession when we were at a shared facility that was in Rancho Cordova. Now you're not in a shared facility anymore. Yes, ma'am. Since okay. we were in a shared facility, I have never had the equipment in my possession. Furthermore, the equipment that he's talking about has nothing to do with this case. This case is primarily around the assets. You have no idea how simple I'm going to make this, sir. Yes, ma'am. He has receipts for certain equipment. I have receipts for more equipment, and I have a very detailed... Just a second. You have a counterclaim for equipment. I have it for equipment and cryptocurrency assets. Too. I'm not bothering with that. Okay, no worries, Your Honor. Yeah, no worries. No Sorry. assets. No there problem, are no Your cryptocurrency Honor. assets. Where is the equipment that you claim he has that belongs to you? It's at, well, it was originally at his house when we moved out of the facility. I relocated all of it to his house. I have an inventory ran on the last day I was at his house, marked with the location, the equipment, and a lot of details. I would love to show it to Your Honor if that's acceptable. Just a second. Do you have... On that list? No. No. Do um, you have any is... equipment at your house? Yes. What equipment do you have at your house? The graphics cards that he's talking about. So you have the graphics cards yes. that belong to him? No, they belong to me mostly. So I bought most What do you mean that they belong to you mostly? I bought most of the graphics cards. He put in um, some money for some equipment expenses. And for my estimates, which I wish I could have asked him, was around $3,000 that he um, put in. I put around $15,000. How do you expect a court to dissect this business mess that you've created. I'm not here for the um, GPUs or graphics cards. That's why I completely left them out. Cause no, I but he's, he has a counterclaim. And that's fine. He can present it. I understand that. Sorry. How do you expect somebody to pick apart this legal morass that you have, except to say that all of the stuff should be sold? Understood. I don't have any value of what you claim you spent for this because there are no amounts on it. Yeah, I'm... Well, that's well. a problem. I do have documentation, like Your Honor, of all of it, and it's labeled who purchased it and the amounts. Um, in addition, the second page here has the totals that he was talking about and the documentation pages okay. below. Now, great. Well, there isn't a lot of very expensive stuff that you paid for, Mr. Mm -hmm. Ulrich. There's not too much, no, Your Honor. No, there isn't too much expensive stuff here, I right? Agree. Yes, you know, we have something for $24, something for $15. You paid for the little stuff, he paid for the big stuff. Two things, Your Honor, that I'd like to mention. First of all, he did not purchase $20,000 worth of assets. This I is did. a highly inflated number. I can it actually prove Maybe, this. Just a second. Yeah, no worries. Just no a second. Problem, I'm not awarding him any money. Each of you will take back the things that you bought. Mm. You didn't have a formed company together. It's not a company asset. It belongs to each of you. You're not in business anymore. Yes. So all I have to know is what do you have at your house and what do you have at yours? He has everything, including all the physical assets. That's a the lie. only thing that I have at my house, Your Honor, is, or it's actually on my computer, technically stored in a digital wallet. Uh, a digital wallet is the same thing as a regular wallet. This is just how we store cryptocurrency. But I don't want to care about no, that. Sorry. I don't no care problem, about that. I'm, uh, all I'm talking about is equipment. Oh, so, I have no equipment at my house, Your Honor. What equipment does he have in his house? He has everything that's listed on that document that I gave you. And I actually do have proof that he has it because... I'd like to see it. So these are text messages from my roommate to his mother. From who? From my roommate. He was supposed to be here as a uh, witness. If and he's not here, you can't show me texts from him. He wasn't able to make Well, I, you can't prove something to me via hearsay from a witness who's not here. It's not hearsay. It's uh, just text messages that he gave. That's hearsay um, by a person well, not here. You know, I actually don't think that you're ready to have this case tried. I, I can't help you. You say you don't have anything in your house. You can't tell me how much the item cost. If he said he doesn't have anything in his house, should I rule that he has to give it back to you? And he said, I don't have it. I can fix a dollar amount, but I can't do that unless you have what you paid for it. I have documentation here that uh, at the value at which I have, have to pay to buy it back. Because th since it was through an auctioning site, 
I don't remember. I had several auctions I, I bought most of that equipment from. You can show me a bank statement where you paid money to an auction house. I just want to see an amount no. that you paid to the auction house. I don't have that on me, apparently. Okay. Well, okay. Your, your case is dismissed without your... prejudice. Go back to the courts where you originally came from and see if they can help you any more than I'm willing to. Can't help you until you get your documentation together, sir. You're the plaintiff in this case. I, have I can't pleaded. award. You have... don't have anything if you don't have what you paid for the equipment. Okay. But he said he doesn't have the equipment. And he's lying. It may the be. And the proof that you have is inadmissible here because your friend who authored nope. those texts is not here. The case is dismissed without prejudice. Go back to the court where you... Patricia Franchini and her husband Giovanni Nunez are suing their neighbor, Scott Ellum, for the cost of a baby macaw bird. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Hello, Kevin. Case 2194, Frankini Nunez versus Ellen. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Nunez? Yes. Your husband? Yes, ma'am. You and Mr. Allen? Ellum. You're Ellum. Right. Our neighbors. Yes, ma'am. And you have backyards that are joined, separated only by a fence. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma what kind of fence? It looks plastic. I'm not sure. It's Who a has a picture fence, of the yeah. fence? And you each have as it would happen. Dogs, same breed. No, ma'am. What do you have? I have a Shetland Sheepdog and a Dutch Shepherd, ma'am. And what do you have? I have Shepherd Mixes. How many dogs? Two, Your Honor. And you have two? Yes, ma'am. This is what the case is about. This is the fence. It's not a chain link fence. It's either a wooden or a plastic fence. And you can see that underneath this fence, there's a board here where I assume there's a hole because the dogs dig holes to get to each other. Is that a fair statement? Yes, Your Honor. Fair statement? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Case is about an incident that occurred. You've been neighbors for a while, and you have had this dog digging also for a while. Also correct? Yes, yes ma'am. The defendants. Yeah. Okay. This incident happened on the 16th of December, 2022. Yes. Why don't you tell me what happened? I got up that morning to let my dogs out. Both. One dog. Okay, so the day started out, me and my husband woke up. My husband had to go get a tire fixed, so he took my smallest dog, my Shetland Sheepdog, with him. I remained home with my two children. Slowly. Yes. Okay. Sorry. How um, old are your kids? They are six and seven, ma'am. Okay. I remained home with my children because they were ill, and I had an appointment with them later on that day. My husband went to go fix the tire at 8 a.m. I got up in the morning to let my dog out. I let... Slowly. Sorry. Got up in the morning to let your dog out. Yes. The Shepherd mix? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I let her out, and then she came back in, and I was cleaning, and my two children were in my master suite with my macaw, Penelope. Okay. That's what the case about. This case is about a macaw. Yes, ma'am. The cost of a macaw. Yes, Which is a bird. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Go ahead. My kids were in the master suite. I opened the door. I'm out there cleaning. I let my dog out of my... And the dog came back. ...sliding door. She came back. Well, then she stayed by the door. Now, none of my windows have curtains, so I can... Just a second. So that, But she stayed by the door, but she was inside? She came back inside. I shut the door. I then... This was 20 minutes went by. She's by the door. She's crying. I told her we would play later. I assumed she had to go to the restroom again, and I let her out again. She stood on the step, but she didn't go further than that, and she was just kind of staring out. From the left side of the house is where the defendant's dog, Bella, charged in my home. And then when I tried to grab her... When you say his dog, Bella... Yes. ...came into the side and ran into the house, that doesn't... Somehow, if the dog, Bella, came out and your dog was on the step, it would seem to me it would stop on the step at first to sniff, play with your dog if your dog is sitting outside. I mean, I have dogs. It would go over to that dog first, not run into your house. You would think that, ma'am, but she's been in our house three times before this because I had to return her to the defendant on three separate occasions. And? And she didn't do that that day. When she came in the backyard on the three other instances, I remember the very first time someone from that household came to my door, and I knew the dog was in my backyard, but I didn't open my door. I left her back there. I figured they'd come. They did. And I said, hold on a second. I put my kids, I put my Sheltie in the room with my bird, and I shut the door. Are we talking about the same no, date? No, We're talking about other days that I no. brought... Okay. Let's not go on tributaries. Yes, ma'am. What's your dog's name? Lucy. Lucy. So the dog just went straight into your house. And what did Lucy do? Lucy charged after her and tried to attack her. Okay. So 
The dog has been in your house before. Have there been incidents with the two dogs? No, ma'am. The defendant's dog is submissive to my dog. So the only time I brought the dog in my home was when I shut all the doors to all my bedrooms. Someone from the defendant's home came. I opened up the front door, brought her in, and she went straight out because there was nowhere else for her to go. Okay, so it's your dog that is the... Lucy is the more aggressive dog. Lucy's never been aggressive with her. I believe that Lucy was aggressive with her that day because of the way she came in the house. When you say Lucy was aggressive, what did she do? She started growling at her, and she started... To... In the house? Yes. Now and... they're in the house. Put a period there. We have the two dogs in your house. Yes. And they are growling at each other, so that's not a happy picture because they're big dogs. Yes. Now let's get to the bird. You purchased a macaw. Yes, ma'am. You have a photograph of what they look like? Yes. When did you purchase the macaw? I purchased her with payments over time. I completed mm -hmm. the purchase at the end of September, September 30th. This is the macaw? Yes, ma'am. That's my A favorite. parrot? Yes, ma'am. In December, how old was she? She was going to be eight months. And how much did you pay for her? I paid $4,320.08 for Penelope. Okay, can I see the bill? Absolutely, ma'am. Her birth certificate along She's with beautiful. all of the... Pretty bird. Thank you, ma'am. She bolted in my master suite where my kids were. Lucy? No, Bella. Bella. Bella did. And I went in there, like, I heard my kids screaming, Bella is killing Penelope. And later today... Is there something wrong with your mind? No. Did you just say to me, am I crazy? Did he say he owed back child support? Yes. yes. To her? Yes. yes. Patricia Franchini claims her neighbor, Scott Ellum, owes for the cost of a baby macaw bird killed by Scott's dog. Tell me what got you interested in the macaw. Earlier this year, full disclosure, ma'am, I had a, ended up in the hospital very sick for two weeks, and I was going through a lot, and I started volunteering at the bird store down by my home, and I really liked the Hans macaw because my grandma had one when she was younger. Slowly. Yes, ma'am. And so I spent a lot of time bonding with the birds there, and my husband and I thought it would be good and therapeutic for me, given what I had been going through. Okay, now the two dogs are in your house, sort of fighting with each other. They did not fight, ma'am. I did not well, them to... growling, Yes, ma'am. Growling at each other. And tell me what happened with Bella and the macaw. I tried to calm Lucy down, and my master door was open. Everything was happening so fast. I know I'm describing it slowly, but it was quick. She bolted in my master suite where my kids were. Lucy? No, Bella. Bella. Bella did. I heard my kids screaming, Bella is killing Penelope. And they... That's the bird. Yes. And I tried to get to Bella. I couldn't. My dog was standing in between us. And while I was with the two dogs, then my son thought, oh, I'm going to go get her. And that's when he got... Bella kind of snapped at him, and she scratched him. And so then I couldn't get her. I, I couldn't... She literally was, like, chewing her up and, like, dropping her and, like, biting her again, you know? And it wasn't until my Dutch Shepherd bit her on the nose that she finally let her go. And I swooped and I grabbed her. I booked it to my pantry in my kitchen with my kids. And Lucy stayed in front of the door. And I have a door on it. And I just stayed in there. And I called my husband and I was screaming on the phone. He got home maybe, I don't know how long. It probably really only was like five or ten minutes, but it felt like forever. She was like, and where was in my Bella arms. during this? Time. Bella was around the pantry with the bird in her mouth. And then I took the bird from Bella and then I put her to the cage. And then Lucy just stayed by the, by the parrot. And then I opened the door and yeah, talked to the that. kids. Um, they were all hysterical and I was trying to understand what she was Where saying. Where was Bella? Bella was in the kitchen with a parrot. And how did Bella get back to the defendant? I walked her over. How did you do that? Kind of like how a, a mother pup grabs her by the, by the neck. I grabbed her by the neck and I w walked her over. Okay, your dog killed their bird in their house. And? Your Honor, the hole that allowed Bella to get in to their backyard is primarily dug by their dog over the course of many, many months. And? I continued to repair my side of the fence. Their dog continued to dig the hole, destroyed wood that I had put there. The dog got through in that story. It's sad, but that's not the story that he gave to my wife when he came pounding on my door. Well, you can't tell me what he said to I your wife, sir. Okay, that's fair, Your Honor. I can tell you what he said to me. I called him. You can tell me what he said to you. 
instantly? Just you have to understand, he wasn't home when your dog got into the house. He came home at the end of the episode. Do you understand that? I understand that. Okay. Understanding that, you can tell me your version of what he said to you. What they both said to me. I've had conversations with the both of them since this has happened. Okay. The story has changed two or three times. First, it was she was doing something in the backyard and Bella just came charging in and basically knocked her out of the way, got inside. The first story was, I assumed the entire time that he was home, because when he was talking to me over the phone... I don't care what you happened. assumed. He wasn't home when it started. Your problem, sir, is, first of all, you were aware of the hole. I don't care who dug it. You were aware of it. And it's not the first time that the dog has gone onto their property. Has their dog got onto your property? No, because I fixed my side of it. Just, I take care so of the answer house. is the answer is no. Correct. Who do you live in your house with? My wife and my children. How old are your children? I have a one-year-old. I have a seven-year-old. Let us say it's their fault that the hole existed that allowed your dog to get out. But you were aware of it because it had happened before that they had to bring your dog back. Is that a fair statement? That's fair, yes. Okay. Let us assume that it was your dog that was responsible for the hole. And their dog, despite the fact that yours was a better digger, you know, having dogs and having a fence, they both dig at the same place. They may not have fixed their side, but they both dig at the same place trying to get to each other. Whose fault do you think it would be if their dog created the major part of the hole, got into your yard, and bit your one-year-old? Whose fault would that be? I think it would be equally our faults. Really? Absolutely, yeah. For really? Di for digging, for not taking care of your property? Absolutely. Really? I actually find that answer sort of bizarre. I would take responsibility if my child got hurt due to something that I didn't take care of. Absolutely, I would. Well, you may feel guilty about it, but you would certainly want them to pay all of your child's medical bills. No, I would not. Well, then you're a better person than the law is, sir, because your dog was outside of your control, clearly, because it got into their house. It was something that you were aware was a possibility, no matter who dug the hole, so you were aware because it had happened before, and your dog caused damage. And the damage your dog caused... And I'm putting the emotional distress, these two young children and the plaintiff seeing your dog kill this bird that they had been paying off so much per month for a very long time. Putting aside that, they paid $4,300 for this property that your dog destroyed. And that's your fault. You're responsible for that. So if because of this problem and your dog has a problem and their dog has not come onto your property but your dog comes onto their property, then you have to say, you know what? I'm not letting my dog go out unsupervised because it has created trouble in the past. May have been their fault because they didn't fill in the hole as quickly or as carefully as you did. But you knew that that happened and you're responsible for the damage. It would be no different than if the dog ran inside and as she was trying to get the dog, the dog bit her and she had to have surgery and she had to have a plastic surgeon deal with reconstruction. Who do you think would be responsible for that? That would be you. And just because it's a poor little bird that happened to be the victim of this doesn't make you any less responsible. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $4,300. We're finished. Court is adjourned. I feel like it was justice for Penelope. When a homeowner doesn't take care of their property and someone lets another dog in their house, they shouldn't be blaming other people for that. It was extremely difficult to hear my kids screaming like that and do nothing to calm them down. The judge's ruling is the judge's ruling. I hope that he never gets another pet again. I don't think there's going to ever be a relationship, which is totally fine by me. One of the most interesting things about that case is I don't think that the defendant's dog, Bella, was a quote-unquote aggressive dog. But I didn't get a hint that the other dog was even aggressive. Even by the fact that the husband was able to walk her back by the scruff of the neck, if that was an aggressive dog, they would just yeah. turn right around and give you a nice little snap. So that says to me that although the dog didn't obviously do it on purpose, what are you going to do? But you're responsible as a defendant. You let your dog out. It's a act that's happened more than once. You were on notice. Dog is out of your control. You're responsible. That's the bottom line. Case 2202, Young versus Buchanan. All parties, please come forward. Essie Young is suing her granddaughter's father, Keith Buchanan, for an unpaid loan she gave him for a car. 
Miss Young, the defendant is married to your daughter? No. He is the father of your grandchild? Yes. Do he and your daughter live together? No. Where does your daughter live? In Maple Shade. Were they ever married? No. They have one child? Yes. Who's 12? Yes. Did you live together with Miss Young's daughter? Well, at one point, she lived with me in Maple Shade. How long ago? This was 2010, 2011. You mean when your daughter was a baby? Yes. How long have you had custody of your granddaughter? 11 years. My daughter never stayed with him. I don't know that. He says uh, she did. Yeah, but she did. So she got that money that he owed her for child support, for taking care of his daughter, and he wrote that off of the loan. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Essie Young claims her granddaughter's father, Keith Buchanan, refuses to pay back a loan she gave him for a car. This is a very simple case, because I don't have to get into the history of why you have custody of your granddaughter. Yes. Mr. Buchanan, according to you, asked you for a loan to buy a car. Yes. When was that? Before he got it. He was calling every day. Did you maintain a relationship with him? Yes and no. Would he visit his daughter? No. Ever? Once in a blue moon. Okay. I usually have to take my granddaughter to see him. Okay. It was sort of odd to me if he was never married to your daughter, so they didn't have a formalized relationship. They don't live together now. Why would you loan him? I know that you did. Mm -hmm. Why would you loan him money? My granddaughter. Except you're a very nice person. My granddaughter asked me to. She said, Grandma, would you please help my dad? I told her I really don't want to. And she said, could you please do it for me? Oh, and different then, story. Yes, and then I said, okay. Okay, so you discussed with your daughter during one of these visits that you needed money to buy a car? No, never did. You never did? No. Who is this person? That's my wife. Does she work? Yes. Do you work? Yes. Well, why would you ask your daughter's grandmother, who takes care of her, who's always taken care of her. You don't, neither does her mother. Why would you not ask your wife's family? You both work, take out a loan. Why would you go to her and ask her for money? But it was a situation that happened and I lost my previous car. I contacted Essie, I talked to Essie. No, I'm asking you why you would ask her. What would prompt you to call her? Doesn't she have parents? Yes, she do. I did that and at the time they couldn't help. So you went to her parents I, first? I went to, I went to her family first. They said, they, sorry, they can't help at the time. So Mrs. Young was the last, my last resource, which I didn't want to use, but at the time I had to use it because I had no other choice. I had to hurry up and get a vehicle. Well, why didn't you take out a loan? Actually, I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? Because my credit's not all, all that great. I tried to take out loans, I tried to go... Does your wife have a car? Yes, she has a car. Okay, why don't you use her car? She worked. I worked, I worked an hour and a half away from home. And she worked, too, and we worked around the same time. How much money did you borrow from her? 2000 How much did you give back? 912 912 Show me. On page 4, May 5th, 2022, she got $912. From what? From my taxes. And we agreed on once I found my taxes, she would get, I would give her $2,000 for my taxes. She got $912 from them, that same taxes, because I owed backup child support. So she got on top of my regular payment for child support plus $912. What? Is there something wrong with your mind? No. Did you just say to me, am I crazy? Did he say he owed back child support? Yes. And so she got that money that he owed her for child support, for taking care of his daughter, and he wrote that off of the loan. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Well, I not ever. I should take that back. It's the dumbest thing I've heard today. If you owed her back child support, how much did you owe her? Only owed her $900. In back child support? Yes. Okay. Then I fully forgot. Just a second, just a second. 
You owed her that money. In addition to owing her that money, you owed her $2,000. Do you understand that? So you owed her $900 plus $2,000. Are you not following me? Am I getting something wrong here? I'm with you. Are you following that? That's either a yes or a no. No, I'm not. Okay, well, I'm gonna repeat it again. What you said was they took money out of your taxes for back child support, $900. So that means you paid her $900 of the $2,000. That's what your argument is. Yes. Am I getting that? Yes. You already owed her the $900. I, was... did, I had no awareness that I owed her $900. When I found out that $900 got taken out the to taxes, I had no tax coming back. I asked, actually, I was like, look, you got $900. You're going to have to give me time. And that's when it went south. You got $900 that I owed you anyway. Now, now I need more time. Oh, my God. How is your granddaughter in school? She do okay? Yes, she's She does well. okay? Yes. Okay. Either his math skills or his moral skills are somehow lacking. It's the moral. Judgment for the plaintiff for the amount of $2,000. We're finished. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I think the judge seen right through him. He was going to be miserable, so I just let him be miserable. No one thinks like that. As long as she go by her life or go by my life, leave my family alone. I just think he was hustling me. Only contact me when he got something to do, something to do with my daughter, that's it. I don't want anything to do with him either. So initially, I may have been a little lost. It took me some time to get there. But I thought that what the defendant was saying was that he was expecting $2,000 on his tax returns. So he told plaintiff, when I get it, I'll repay you the 2000 And then in his mind, when the 900 left the account, he didn't know that that was not going to be there for the back child support. So he only had, you know, the 900 and change left to give her. And I was like, okay. That makes sense. He thought that it would be the full 2000 Come to find out, he thinks that the back child support is what fulfills his, his Loan obligation, obligation on... which wasn't even the full amount, not even half. And all to someone that has been raising your child for 12 years. He's probably worse at 